Yeah, welcome back again to to get TV to each and every one of you who are joining us for the first time. And uh, for our returning viewers, karibuni tena and uh, we are very grateful for having you again. Now and today we have Derek. Derek uh, ni nimsekia the guy behind the scenes. And wameski uh, imagine <laughs> as they had this an old face. <laughs> and today Derek will be narrating to us his story. He has been in prison. He has been to all prisons main maximum prisons in Kenya for a robbery case he has been a drug addict in prison and he has also reformed and turned his life to be whom he is today in prison Derek Alishikwa when he was 14 years of age and was sentenced to death he was the first youngest person to be in prison and sentenced to death na kupeleka me in prison at his age. So today Derek Nyar is going to tell a story but before I'm going introduce Kwenyu kindly consider subscribing and also sharing this video ndio pia wasi wenye wana to watch ama pia wasi wenye uta share this video na wao waweze ku learn from Derek because I believe the today's story it's a story that you and I have never listened to ever before and I believe your lives will never be the same again. So, come on just subscribe please. Subscribe, turn on the notifications bell. Do you get notified kila time tuna waletia new videos like this. And also, you can also to put on each and every social media platform kama it to get TV. And also you can contact us if you kona story tamu, if you know that your story is life changing or you kona testimony to ya kupea to say just to motivate, educate and entertain people. In your number yet to Peter Koko Freshy. So, Mr. Derek, thanks you. Yeah, bro. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm happy to have you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh-huh. How is life, Sai? <laughs> Kidogo, I can say. Uh-huh. Niko na freedom. Uh-huh. Na pumua hewa. Uh-huh. At least na eza ona magari. Uh-huh. And some few things ambazo sikuwa niko na wezo. I wasn't expecting a young man. And to my surprise you are younger than I, ever, I was imagining <laughs> okay that is what happened <laughs> na yes i'm young yes let me maybe start by introducing myself yeah yeah by the way kwanza wasalimia before to unaambiwa ni nani umetoka wapi okay yeah let me say i'll use both swahili and english because bado yeah. i i have shallow english <laughs> but <laughs> no tunaweza tumia kiswahili okay yeah to all the viewers hi mimi ni Derek Kariuki Wangui mm-hmm. kwetu ni Mombasa mm-hmm. lakini currently i'm in Nairobi yeah na it's because of some two or three reasons mm-hmm. Derek alizaliwa tarehe mbili mwezi wa 7 1999 wow I was born in a family a single mom. My mom anaitwa Teresia Wangui mm. Ngari. Home kwao kwa kina Shosh ni Kirinyaga County. Okay. Na sijazaliwa na maisha ya dad. Na nilianza kusomea shule iko inaitwa ya Port View Academy. Mm-hmm. Iko just iko within Magongo. Yeah. Iyo ni Changamo constituency nika move vizuri my mom saizo alikuwa ni casual laborer lakini akaja akapata kazi ya IPZ mm-hmm. although it was not paying lakini anajaribu tu kungangana hivyo so tuka move na mom vizuri although my mom alikuwa ni mmoja wale wakali zaidi wa mama wakali vibaya <laughs> sana 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 mm-hmm. so by in school i was so good vizuri sana nilikuwa na perform na nilikuwa niko na BD pia. Mm. So nilipofika class 4, my mama kaamisha hiyo kampuni. Alikuwa akifanya kampuni ilikuwa inaitwa Shines. Iko Jomvu. Mm. So akaamisha kampuni inaitwa MK na and we have to we had to vacate. Mahali pale tulikuwa tunakaa Magongo ndio twende Jomvu sasa. Okay. Tulipohamia Jomvu, my mom that was the first time it was on a December. He introduced me. She introduced me kwa mwanaume alikuwa anaitwa Paul Mwigai kama P 
Peter okay. Moigai kama sorry. Okay. Alipo ni introduce akaniambia he is my dad. Ah, oh. Na kwangu mimi though I'm bright enough kuelewa na ku learn kwamba hapana there was something kidogo niliangalia nikaona huyu mm, seems like hakuna vile hakuna <laughs> hata mahali penye nimemfanana lakini i wouldn't question okay. so ikabidi mimi nikaka so mimi nika by the way alinipenda sana he was a truck driver long distance mm. ah, alikuwa ananipenda sana ananipeleka out chochote chenye nataka nanunulia lakini my mom tofauti kuwa ye ni mkali kwangu alikuwa pia mkali sana kwa wale mwanaume. Okay. Na ikawa to a point sasa ikafikia mahali nikaona wanaanza kukosana kwa sana. Mm-hmm. Actually wakati wa 2007 election post election kidogo ilini affect sana na ikatoa affect sisi kama familia kwa sababu my dad hakuwa anaenda kazi. Huyo mwenye babangu mlezi sasa yeah. hakuwa anaenda kazi, mm-hmm. mama hakuwa anaenda kazi. Shule na Isa Seman nilikuwa naenda it was just around 3 minutes walk kutoka okay. mahali pindi kwetu naishi mm-hmm. tulikuwa tume rent mm-hmm. single room okay. 2500 okay. lakini ilikuwa all inclusive na stima so, so, so mki move from uh, this place to this place ulihama pia shule eh, shule ilibidi nikahama okay. airport view nikaenda kaka shule kanaitwa Bright Star Academy okay. kaka within Jomvu Aldina Jomvu Kuad okay. so mimi sikuelewa kuko sana ni nini so ilipofika wakati wa december the same year 2008 sasa that's when mom alipigia magazines wangu mimi lakini wakubwa wangu akawaambia they travel wa kuja Mombasa they something ambayo nataka ku share mm. so mom walipokuja bado niko mdogo siku na ile kwamba naweza challenge ama nikauliza maswali no It was a very hard moment to me wakati ambao alikuja. Kwa sababu mama alisema kwa sababu that by that time kabla aje kuwaita ndile alikuwa to and fro hosi anaenda hosi anatoka anaenda hosi anatoka hivyo. Mm. Your dad and mama. Mom. Okay. My dad wa hapo washako sana na mama. Okay. Ameondoka tu kwa sababu ameona mama anampeleka mbio, mbio sana. Okay. Anamfutisha kazi kampuni, anamfutisha kazi kampuni so ilipofikia hapo ikabidi sasa hakuna option yeye akaondoka okay. so mom hapo ndio akapronounce kwamba it's very unfortunate na akasema nimekuwa nkienda hospitali every now and then na babake huyu aliniambukiza i'm now hiv positive na natumia dawa ndio hizi nilienda hospitali inaitwa Bomu Medical na kutoka hiyo wakati anatumia dawa so kwangu mimi ndio ile wakati ambapo kila mtu alikuwa na ile dhana kwamba HIV hiyo isolation kutengwa everyone hata watoto wenzako wakijua your mom is on that state hata kucheza na yeye hawezi mm-hmm. so it was very hard to me and i can say my mom she changed a lot not to me me by then nimezaliwa na nimelelewa kandika kanisa katoliki masomo yote ya dini nilifanya nikiwa catholic mm-hmm. sijai change kanisa till to date okay mom kwa hiyo wakati alipo change ali change kutoka kanisa aka change marafiki aka change family members madada zake mabra everyone Mimi by the time nilikuwa nakuja kufanya 8 mimi nikiwa shule average yangu ilikuwa ni yani range yangu ilikuwa tuseme ni kutoka 350 390 hapo mm. ndio ilikuwa most of the time inaingia hapo lakini due to that wakati ambao nakuja kufanya 8 ikani affect nikapata 324 marks class 8 mm. nilipopata 324 so mama akawa hataki kunipeleka shule lakini sasa ile kupush ile sasa anaona marafiki wa karibu wanaenda shule so ikabidi pia akanipeleka shule although hana ile support full ya kwamba anaweza so nikakuwa enrolled shule inaitwa Akilifi Township yeah. it's a provincial school boarding that's where i started 
iko Kilifi County uh, just within Kilifi town hapo tu iko opposite pan university okay so mi nikaanza form 1 vizuri though sasa nikawa ikifika wakati wa half term half term yetu si kama hiyo wakati huu ambao wanaenda whole week yetu ilikuwa ni thursday mm. monday tuesday mmesharudi mm. yeah. so ikawa mi ikifika wakati wa half term siku wetu ilikuwa kuna option ya kubaki shule so, so lazima uende home so so naingia form 1 mwaka gani niliingia form 1 that was 2010 okay 2011 sorry yeah, 2011. so mimi nikapiga mahesabu nikaona ikifika wakati wa ku half term ama kufunga shule nimemaka tayari so like naenda wapi kwa sababu mam mimi actually niko na alama ya kisu hapa niko na alama ya kisu hapa niko na alama zingine hizi ni mama aliniweka so my mom mm. ilikuwa ni mtu despite all she is my mom mm. na hata kama hanipendi bado nampenda sana so ilikuwa ni mtu wa kitu kidogo tu anything kitu kidogo tu hata ile kama vile mama anaweza ita mtoto ukose kuitika labda uko hapo nje kidogo hiyo mm. ni vita umejipangia ambayo lazima ikutoe damu mm-hmm. so i became sasa nikaona eh hey, hapana i was like having those questions eh hey, na huni my mom kweli mm-hmm. mbona watoto wengine wafanye hivi lakini nikaona jaribu kuwei na jaribu kuelewa though i was very young na ikafika to a point sasa nikaona eh hey, hii vita imekuwa kubwa sana mm-hmm. to a point ambao mimi nilishindwa sasa kuvumilia njaa hataki kupika so nikaona hapana mimi itabidi tu i had nothing else to do so nilipoenda chuo tuliporudi half term actually nikiwa form 2 sasa okay. tushachagua tulikuwa tujachagua subject kwanza tuliporudi shule I was like at a sina concentration na jaribu kusoma hivi lakini hakuna kitu naona kwa sababu ya hiyo kitu yenye kuko kwa kichwa My mom akikupata na rafiki yake labda mnaongea what are you talking about Naweza kuwa hata labda amekuita kutume so I was like ah nikaona kwangu mimi sasa niliporudi shule mom hako amelipa school fees so tukafukuzwa mm. second term sasa tulipofukuzwa baada hiyo half term sasa ya katikati mm. tulipofukuzwa kurudi home mimi kufika nyumbani my mom nilipata hayuko so kwa sababu ile shule ilikuwa inapatia barua haikuambi tu na mdomo nenda tu ana mm. inakuandikia barua inakupatia inakuambia pelekea mzazi So ile barua kwa sababu tunakaa kwa plot tu ya hizi plot za Kiswahili ziko na nyumba mingi mingi. Mm. So nikaisukumia pale chini ya mlango. Nikavua uniform, nikabakisha games kits na short. And that's how I left home. Kwa sababu I was like sasa najua hana do. Najua vizuri sana itakuwa ni vita eh, throughout sina amani, sina furaha. Nikakuwa nime pungua mwili sana. Ah, nikaona acha mimi niondoke. Mm-hmm. So nikaanza sasa mtaani sasa, kuhasol, kuchotea watu maji. Mtungi moja unapoa 15 bob, mtungi ni 10. Five ni eh. Mm-hmm. So ni ile sasa unajaribu ku survive. Unalala kwa kinalala kwa kibanda, kuna kibanda fulani ama dhafu fulani ambao inaitwa mama macho ya. Mm-hmm. So nilikuwa naenda kulala hapo usiku. Alikuwa anauza mboga, naenda nalala pale chini. Nika move hivyo nikashikwa kwanza na mzee wa mtaa mm. kwa nini kijana mdogo na tunakujua wewe ulikuwa unasoma mali fulani kwa nini usomi so i was like sasa mimi mwenyewe hata hiyo mambo ya masomo imenitoka kwa so i don't have any parental love i don't have any love kutoka kwa anyone else ah nikaona so nikapelekwa tononoka children's court na mimi nikaona nimeshtakiwa na my mama ameshtakiwa na kesi ya PNC protection and care mm. So tunoka children's home instead ya kuniachilia baada ya kunishtaki wakanipeleka Alikoni children's home. Hiyo mm. Alikoni remands ya watoto. Mm-hmm. So nikakaa miezi tatu nikapelekwa Chuda Rescue Center. Kupelekwa Chuda Rescue Center waka my mom sasa akaja. Bara kwamba alifuatilia mpaka akaja. Akaja akanichukua tukarudi nyumbani. Nilipofika nyumbani hapo ndipo nilipata kuna kisu nitakuonyesha niko naye hapo hivi. 
Hii mm. hii ndio alinidunga hii. Na ni kwa sababu eti nilikuwa nimetoka. So I was like, "Hey, hapana. Sasa mimi hapo ndo nikaingia missing kabisa. Nikatoka within sasa Mombasa West ambayo ni Jomvu constituency. Nikaenda Kisauni. That is Bamburi. Mm. Sasa Bamburi unajua Bamburi ni kubwa. Uko karibu town huko. Eh. Mm. Ah, sasa maisha nikaanza sasa kuona hapa. Mm. I must use another way kupata do. Mm. And you at least ni survive. Nikaanza kuchota chote ya watu maji. Nikaona ya ileti. Nikaanza kwenda beach. Kukodisha watu zile maflota na ajiriwa. So kikodisha flota moja kwa mtu. Akikupatia 50 yako ni 10 bob. Mm. Nikafanya, nikafanya fanya. So nikakutana jamaa na hitu wa Mustafa. Mustafa. Hapo ndi akaniambia Sasa ye alikuwa nafanya tu hapo beach. Ye alikuwa na uza hizi maleso za mabikinis. Whatever za madem. So akaniambia ni haji kijana vipi tuende hivi tukaingia mahali kuna kachuo mfulani hivi kuna kama ni amilele beach lakini kuna mahali mawe ni mawe mm. kubwa sasa tunaingia mahali chini kanambia ni haji ushaikuvuta ndoo mnikamwambia bado ushaikuvuta chochote ngambia bado ah haina shida shika hii mm. so kanipatia that was the first time nilishika role ya bangi and that was the first time nilipoasha and it was like that feeling nikasikia eh na hii kitu iko poa <laughs> lakini sasa mm. baada ya sasa ikanibeba kwa sababu ilikuwa it was my first time na sijawahi mm. so mimi mahali penye nilienda kulala hivi nikiamka na ilamka the almost the next day niko na njamba ya sana so it was like sikuipenda mimi mm. lakini sasa i have to do something for survival si the survive hivyo so um stafa kumbe ni mjanja ujanja yake kuna vi mm. akanambia wewe fanya hivi twende zetu bamburi so he was the first guy actually kunitolea bunduki ilikuwa ina revolver mm. na ilikuwa na risasi nne so na revolver risasi zake yeah. zinaingia kando mm. so akanambia hii ni jembe ya kazi we can use this to get money and so i was like eh hey, bunduki a uh, kila mtu anaweza ati lazima atatoa <laughs> so i had that courage na confidence ya kusema i have to do it now for survival so akanambia kuna job yenye tutaenda by that time mpesa they were not that famous sana kwa kila mtu mm. na by that time ilikuwa zina stock pesa mingi float ilikuwa mpesa mingi mm. so the first time tulienda mimi mstafa na jamaa mmoja alikuwa anaitwa Shina. Nilikuwa simjui sana lakini it was the first time. Mm-hmm. So tulipoenda and I saw eh hey, at the first time na nimepata 44,000 kwangu mimi mganya wangu ile mkanjo wangu sasa. Mm-hmm. Hai nikaona in this I, is something good. At least I can do it. Mlienda wapi? It was within Shanzu. Okay. Shanzu. Shanzu ni just an Mpesa. Yeah. Ile 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 2014 sasa. Okay. So ni 2012 yeah, yeah. mwezi wa pili. Mwezi wa pili ya yeah. 2012. Eh 2012 mwezi wa pili. Si umetoka shule that time. Second time. Second time. Second. 2013 mwezi wa pili. Oh, I'm 2013. sorry. Yeah, 2013 okay. mwezi wa pili. Okay. So nikaona ai hapana. So hapo nikaenda current nyumba nikapata single room ya ilikuwa 2900 pamoja na steam alikuwa ni 34 mm. so nikanunua bed nikanunua mattress nikanunua nunua tu vitu and so i was like hata nikiingia kwangu kidogo i'm Nika still a young man <laughs> nikaboy lakini rent size ndiko natumia huyo mstaff kwa sababu alikuwa na id nilikuwa sina id so nika move na ikawa sasa several robberies eh don't chenye naweza sema kwa robberies zote za yenye ienda kwa hiyo wakati Hakuna robbery yoyote yenye iliwahi kuharibika kwa sin. Okay. Kwamba polisi wakatokea ama raia ikaleta shida. No. Tulikuwa tunatoka tu smoothly, thank God for that. Na hilo bari ya mwisho sasa ndio nije kushikwa. That's when sasa nilikutana na new faces ambao nilikuwa siwajui. There was a guy alikuwa anaitwa Peter Waroi. Tulikuwa tunamuita G. Mm. 
kuna mmoja alikuwa anaitwa Basio Michael Kiari hao ni walikuwa na wasi wa Nairobi mm. lakini sasa wakati ambapo Nairobi kulinuka sana hiyo wakati waizi wakawa wanatafutwa sana wakati mbia Mombasa so kwa sababu Mustafa alikuwa ni mjanja ndio tukashikana na wao okay. so this Vincent Okoth mahali penye anaikula na, na kuja kuingilia yeye jina yake tunamuita meja mm. mahali penye alikuwa anakuja kuingilia yeye aliingilia tu appoint kwa sababu yeye ni mjaka yeye alikuwa kuna bunduki tofauti ki brown mm. na yeye alikuwa kwa na access ya kujua mahali penye resources zitatoka okay. so kwangu mimi they tried kwa sasa ikakuwa ni kikundi complete ya five good people five four strong men na mimi Akijina. ka junior mm. so mimi walikuwa natumia kwa sababu kidogo they were not that literate hata kama mimi nilikuwa nimefika form 2 lakini usharpness wa simu even i can use a laptop even now na mimi sijai somia Mm-hmm. So kidogo niko nako kaka kitu in mind. Okay. So walikuwa wananipenda sana kwa sababu hata ikifika wakati wa tumeshika mtu and uh, like ATM yake amepeana pina amepeana. So they never knew how to go and withdraw money from the ATM. So okay. walikuwa naenda na mmoja wao, naenda na chip in my, kwa sababu mimi babangu mlezi alikuwa ashanifunza. Tulikuwa tunaenda na pesa point by that time. Okay. So naenda tuna withdraw kama iko na hiyo limit ya 24 hours tu na wait another 24 hours tunaenda tuna withdraw sasa hii robbery tuli ya mwisho tulienda on 15th mwezi wa 10 mm-hmm. nyali sasa robbery mingi kazi yetu ilikuwa ni tunakuja tunangoja mtu kwa boma yake mm-hmm. wakati ambapo anaingia so tushakuchunguza labda kama 3 days hivi unakuja masaa fulani amana labda unafanya kazi fulani hivyo so tukamsubiri huyo mwanaume alikuwa anaitwa Sydney Anthony Mbote he, he was the manager transist Africa by that time mm. so ni half cast ya mkikuyu na mzungu okay. so tulimngoja kwa gate yake kwa gate yake askari wake alikuwa ni msomali alikuwa anaitwa Ibrahim Malele Salat mm. so tulipomngoja alikuja around saa tatu usiku so ndio hapo aja mawe zangu sawa kamtokea bunduki tulikuwa na mbili okay. tuko na panga pia <laughs> kiswa iko sekani <laughs> na ndimbo ndimbo ni zinaelewa ndimbo yeah. ile chuma ile ile chuma haziko sekani mm. sasa alipokuja akafunguliwa gate akaingia kutoka kwa gate mpaka mahali penye gari yake alikuwa anaenda ku park ndio afike kwa nyumba ndio ashuke sasa ile kwa ni kama 50 meters hivi mm na it's within links road nyali ni mahali penye pako very secure lakini tuli manage hivyo hivyo kumanova so sisi hao ndani sasa tuko mimi Mustafa Vincent Peter Oroi mm. na Basilo Maiko Kiari okay. so Basilo Maiko Kiari ambaye jina yake sana sana kwa ndio mtamrithi huyo na G kazi yao ilikuwa ni kumdunga So mmoja alimdunga na kioa left, mmoja kwa right akamfungulia. Meja wakati ambapo sasa huyo alitolewa akarudishwa kiti ya nyuma ndiye meja sasa kaingia ku drive. So mimi kazi yangu ilikuwa mostly ni kwa sababu watu wote ambao watashikwa kitolewa kwa sering alikuwa naletwa anawekwa hapa kwa kiti ya nyuma, kiti ya mbele na ya nyuma hapa katikati. Mm. So mimi nilikuwa naka far naka upande wa far left. Mm. Mimi kazi yangu ilikuwa ni mahojiano kumuliza ehe ATM zako sinishamtoa wallet simu pin ya Mpesa vitu kama hizo mobile banking so mostly sana sana nilikuwa ni eh pin yako ya Mpesa pin yako ya ATM na urudie kama mara kumi ndio nikue accurate kwamba ni hiyo kitu yenye umesema hata mm-hmm. kama we shall drive for more than one hour lakini tunazunguka tu hivi hivi mm-hmm. na jaribu na kaa kama 15 minutes na kuuliza tulisema pin yako ya ATM ni gani ya Imperial ama ya cooperative ama ya equity hivyo. So ukitaja the same hatuwezi kukuachilia mpaka yule mwenye tutaenda naye kwa ATM apige simu aseme kweli pin iko correct. Mm. Bila tukuachilia. Sasa huyu jamaa tulipomshika hakuwa na do cash alikuwa na only 20000 kwa sorry yenye tuli manage kutoka kwa kwa ATM yake it was only 20500 mm. kwa mfuko alikuwa na i think 4500 alikuwa na simu ya BlackBerry simu nyingine ya Samsung na laptop mm. 
So si tukaenda nazo na tukachukua simu ya watchman pia tukaenda nayo. Mm-hmm. Sasa baada ya kwenda nazo tulizunguka naye within nyali tukazunguka naye tuna buy time tukaenda tukaconfirm hii do kweli iko sawa tukaenda tukatoa 20500. Mm-hmm. And so we were to wait for the 24 hours kama atakuwa hajapiga bank ku cancel mm-hmm. transactions tuende tutoe tena. Okay. So bahati mbaya yeye akawa ashapiga. So tulipoenda ile kadi ikakatalia ndani na tulienda inaitwa ilikuwa by that time ilikuwa ni Nakuma Tinyali lakini saa hii inaitwa City Mall okay. ah sasa tulipona eh hapana sisi tukatoweka so tulikaa saa hizo kuishi nishamleta ji sasa tunakaa naye kwa kwangu mimi sasa mahali penye nilikuwa mimi nimerent mm-hmm. mureithi huyu basi Michael Kiari anakaa na meja na anakana mstafa nyumba moja. Okay. So sisi tunakaa wawili wale wanakaa watatu. Okay. So siku moja baada ya siku tatu tulifanya kitendo 15th 16th usiku. 15th 16th usiku. Okay. So on 18th on a Friday. Mm. Asubuhi nimetoka tu kwa nyumba. Nilikuwa napanda mahali kunaitwa wa fisheries. Okay. Steam ilikuwa imepotea hiyo saidi yenye nilikuwa nimeishi sasa nilikuwa naenda hiyo saidi ya fisheries mm. kuweka simu kwa moto okay. sasa nikiwa napanda kidogo nikaona kuna extra elementi pita mm. KBC ya blue iliponipita sikuwa na ile dhana ya kwamba inaweza kuwa ni ngori eh inaweza kuwa ni noma ah, nyuma yake ikawa ni Nissan Caravan ikapita kagarika mwisho ile moto utalanza kapita zikaenda the same direction yenye mimi naenda so kufika hapo mbele kuna mahali kunaita kwa Jinjam house nikaenda ikaingia kwa cyber nikapeana simu nikatoka nje kusimama hapo nje hivi zile gari zimepaka kama hapo na hakuna mtu kwa kile yangu za mahali penye sisi tulikuwa na kanyumba ka meeting point sasa kakupanga kazi kwamba tunaenda mahali fulani we kazi yako ni hivi hivi na hivi kalikuwa mahali kunaitwa masters bamburi masters opposite nikasema leo ni friday na kesho tunafaa tuende job wacha tu nipande kuliko nirudi kwa nyumba lakini jinsi anajua naenda hmm. wacha tu nipande nifike huko niangalie ah, itakuwaje ah. mimi nikiwa napanda hivyo nilipoenda tuseme kama 2 minutes ama 3 minutes hivi nikashangaa ile raia yenye iko mbele yangu mbona inaangalia kwenye nimetoka sasa ile kuangalia nyuma hivi eh niliona around 25 men plain clothes na wote wako na mabunduki AK Wei eh so mimi nikapiga mahesabu nikajua hapa by that time sisi sawa nilikuwa na kona shilingi 700 na shilingi 10 kwa kwa shati nikaingia kwa shop nikamwambia yule kulikuwa na madam hapo sasa kuna dem moja m mm, mm, na mganda mjuganda alikuwa anaitwa Lilian Hydro ameka opposite kule sasa yeye ameniona lakini ananiita mimi nikaingia kwa shop nikajifanya siski nikamwambia nipatie hiyo time ya 50 ya Safaricom 50 kipindi ilikuwa ni you mm. na unipatie 2020 za Safaricom sasa najaribu ku buy time wapite sasa mahali penye wanaenda wao wanazunguka na barabara main lakini okay. kuna kijochoro kenye kamepita mpaka kwa ile nyumba kamepita mpaka kwa lami okay. sasa mimi hata hiyo time i think kuna ya mwisho yenye siku chukua kwa sababu walipoe pasua na hii hi barabara hivi so it was like hapana si mimi wamefuata kwa sababu kama ni mimi wangenishika so wacha nikimbie mpaka kwa hiyo nyumba nikute wale wenye wako niwaambie bwana hii kuna noma lakini sijui ni hawa mimi nikapasua mpaka wode makawa ananiita eh flani Derek ah mimi hata sikujifanya nimesikia ucho sasa kufika kwa ile nyumba kupiga kate hivi kwa sababu ilikuwa si atende nyumba ya plot ni nyumba tu mlango iko nje hmm. kupiga kate hivi nikapata G ule Vincent na Mustafa wanasikiza mangoma wanakula mashada nikamwambia jamaa kuna noma lakini hii noma sijui inaenda wapi inaenda na saa hizo nawaambia hivyo nani huyu Mustafa ndiye sasa naye wametoa nini wametoa mamburungo wametoa marisasi 
ndio inafaa ienda ikafichwa mahali penye hapo chini kuna mahali kuna paita soliani hapo ndio ulikuwa tunaenda kuficha okay. so Mustafa nyenye alifanya yeye alitoka na kuchukua ile bunduki na kwenda mm-hmm. hao wengine tukatoka sasa tukaangalia noma inaenda wapi kama hatua kumi hivi mahali penye sasa nataka kuonyesha hebu kuangalieni sasa ile kuonyesha angalieni mimi ndiye ilikuwa mtu wa kwanza kushikwa kunyanyuliwa hivi juu na mwanaume amejaa amejaza vizuri <laughs> titi titi ti, ti, ti. kwa nyumba ndani po akaniga rushwa tu kama kagunia kwa sababu hiyo <laughs> nilikuwa fedha wetu by that time vizuri nikatupwa huko eh ukisongeza hata kidole Mustafa sijui ni nini zilimshika Mustafa alikuja mwenyewe alijileta eh alikuja mwenyewe sijui haku not ama ilikuwa ni nini alikuja tu mwenyewe tukashikwa So sasa yeye asha ficha bunduki. Ah asha ficha. Okay. Tumekuwa mtu ngapi? Mtu nne sasa. Mm. Ji hajashikwa. Ji alikuwa ni mtu wa kutumia ile Loara, yeah. eh Chavez. Mm. Sasa yeye Ji nilimwacha kwa nyumba. Akili namwambia aende bamburi mwisho aende anunue Chavez ama akuje. Lakini sasa yeye naye kwa sababu alikuwa ni mlevi sana pia. Akasema acha nipitie mahali kuna kapab kingine kanaitwa Saiba. Mm. Nipige mbili alafu ni ndani kwa askize okay. lakini akili namwambia hapana wacha tu niende alafu nda nikitoka hapo nirudi niku nichukue vitu zangu sasa ji kidogo huyo akaja yeah, sasa the, the worst thing ni kwamba it was an operation ambaye ilikuwa inahusisha kutoka bamburi mwisho mm. hadi fisheries ambapo ni mali pakubwa sana na hiyo circumference walikuwa wamezimisha watu radio zao kinyozi magari wamesimamisha barabarani hakuna movement hakuna nini so ilikuwa very notable kwa mtu ambaye iko weird kwa sababu walikuwa wako wengi ji alikuja wakanama na kuja kushtuka akaambua we kiangalia hivi akaambua na AK songa hivi watu watano tukalazwa chini na nasema ni bahati ya Mungu kwa sababu ile bunduki ingepatikana pale tungekuwa tumeuawa kwa sababu a week before just neighbors wise wenzet tu neighbors tu hapo mm. waliuawa walishikwa tano wakauawa watatu on the spot hapo chini wawili wakapaka wamechomwa na cartridge za risasi kwa mgongo mahali penye ilikuwa zinaangukia wale wawili ni wale manage kufanya nini kuingia prison mm-hmm. so ikawa kwangu mimi nasema pia ni bahati lakini sasa hapo ujue mimi ID yangu ya shule nilikuwa niko nayo miaka yote mm-hmm. so kulikuwa na DC hiyo alikuwa anaitwa Paul Kioko kamzee kafupi kama chonne mm-hmm. sasa kakawa kanaangalia eh hey, kanashindwa ai hawa hawa sidhani kama wako na huyu kijana mm-hmm. Sio kanuliza kijana wale tisha yangu ishatolewa kweli iko na do nilikuwa na 1014 na 400 uh-huh. and akakiangalia aka, anaona ID ya shule ya Kilifi Township ai akaniuliza wewe we ni nani nikamwambia fulani fulani unasoma wapi fulani fulani na umekuwa hapa vipi nikamwambia mimi hata nilikuwa napita mm. akasema huyu siweke pingo mimi sikuwekwa pingo lakini sasa hapo yule demganda yule alikuja mpio akauliza Derek ni nini mmefanya so wewe akaanza kuulizwa na wewe unamjua huyu eh si yeye anakujaga ah. akaharibu kaiko pingu sasa Mustafa sasa akakosea na yeye na jila umu kwa mengi aliyotokea Mustafa akakosea kwa kuuliza Oya fungusi zioni kwa swali ambua funga hiyo nyumba. Akasema fungusi zioni. Derek uko na fungo zako? Ah ah. Akajulikana niko. Nikaekwa pingo peke yangu sasa. Tukakuwa escorted mpaka tukaekwa kwa gari. Mm. Wao tuliekwa gari tofauti. Sisi kwa gari tatu. Mimi niliekwa peke yangu wale wakaekwa wawili wale wawili. Tukapelekwa Bamburi Police. Tukapelekwa Bamburi Police tukagawanywa. Mimi na Moreithi tukabakishwa Bamburi Police, mm-hmm. hawa watatu wakapelekwa Nyali Police. Hasa Flying Squad kazi yao ilikuwa ni kutoka kule kuchukua habari, wanakuja huko kusikiza. Sisi tumeshikwa na Friday. 
Saturday si koti, Sunday si koti, mm. Monday ilikuwa ni siku kuu. Mm. Ilikuwa ni siku kuu I think sijui ni Eid, Eid kubwa. So ikawa tuwezi enda koti bado. So fingerprints tulichukuliwa na Sunday. So by that time sasa ujue sasa tumeshikwa na ngori. Mm. Sijui robbery hata sielewi yani hiyo kitu hiyo context vile inaingiana hata naona tu ni kama <laughs> kitu tu ndio. Eh. Mm. So on 21st ndio tulifikishwa koteni. Mombasa Locals na no, number 7 mm. kwa magistrate moja ya SRM alikuwa anaitwa Irene Rogoro. Mm. Tulipofikishwa kwake alipo tuangalia hivi tukisomoa plea tuliposomoa plea mm. kila mtu akakataa hakukonsider kuuliza maybe my age kwa so i was the very young hata kuna wale mawakili walikuwa wanaona wakinongonezana akiulizana mm. lakini sasa hakukonsider hiyo si tukapelekwa shimalatewa by that time tulisomoa bond ya 4 million each surety and i was like sasa nitapigia na nosha lai do kachana nayo and so i set foot shimalatewa maximum security prison for your first time for my first time ndo naingia hivi hapo kimya kimya ni ile nafasi katikati unaelewa mm. kiingia tu documentation to yeah. office hapo amari so tukaambua kukaba sijui kukaba ni nini <laughs> lakini sasa ilibidi nifanye vile wenzangu nimeona wamefanya kujichuma ile na kupitia hivi kukalia migu mm. so tukahesabiwa baada ya kuhesabiwa sasa nikasikia tunafaa tufanywe tero search sasa uzuri pesa yenye nilikuwa niko nayo kwa mfuko hawakuchukua pesa yetu so ikawa nashindwa sasa ni search aina gani so mwingine anaambia ficha pesa sasa nitaficha pesa vipi and everything iko open so pesa yangu ikabidi ikachukuliwa nikaambiwa itaandikishiwa kwa remands office yeah. so hapo tukafanywa search vua viatu una kila mahali kila mahali ezamani hakuna mahali penye ushikwi <laughs> e, utashikwa kila mahali baada ya hivyo so tukaelekezwa tuingie ndani ya jela mm. na kuingia ndani ya jela tukapelekwa block inaitwa C block number 8 sasa hiyo ni block ya remandis e, block ya remandis <laughs> ordinary cases yeah. lakini number 8 ndio hupokea wageni So mnalala hapo namba 8 ndio kama wewe ni mtu wa robbery na mada robbery unapelekwa capital mada unapelekwa mix block yeah. So tulipofika C8 eh, kinara in charge sasa wa hiyo nyumba alikuwa anaitwa Njenga So ule akikoa accused mmoja akamjenga punch So si tukapangwa mali pazuri lakini si pazuri kwa sababu bado unalala hivi kama vile slasi ya mkate mm. hivi hivi <laughs> Ukinuka tu ukienda chooni ukirudi hakuna nafasi. Eh kama panga hivi. Mm. Kinuka tu ukienda chooni kirudi hakuna nafasi. Eh so hapo nikashindwa sasa tukakula. Hiyo chakula sasa hizo inaonja yani kitu ambayo yani hata huelewi viazi nikapewa kiazi lakini kiazi bado iko na maganda so nashindwa kwani how is life here? <laughs> Hi Dhuru. The next morning tukaitwa majina sisi watano kwa sababu hatufai kukaa hiyo si block mm. so tunafaa tupelekwe block yetu sasa tulipelekwa mix block watu watatu mm. mimi Murithi na Vincent mm. watu wawili Mustafa na 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 G wakapelekwa capital mm. ziko just next lakini sasa capital kidogo ina specialize utofauti wa capital na mix mm. ni ile tu kwamba mix block iko na room nne mm-hmm. na ziko na choo ndani Okay. Capital ni sales. Na hizi cell wanatumia tu ndoo kukojoa usiku. Yeah. Lakini maisha ya capital huwa iko tamu zaidi kuliko uko mixed kuliko mixed block. Yeah. So si tukaanza kukaa mixed block <laughs> and I was like kila mtu sasa hakuna hawa wananijua kama Derek. Mm. Mako accused. Lakini kila mtu akiniona si askari, si mfungwa, unasikia eh na mixed block niliona kajuni ya kadogo kale nako kaliletwa kesi ni nini mm. so ikabidi sasa advices za wale watu wazuri ni ile wanaokuambia vizuri sana eh hey, kijana we ni mdogo sana kukua 
kugeuzwa akili hapa ni raka sana ustamani cha mtu ustamani cha kula mtu uspende stare hiyo tu hizo ndio rules zenye nilieka kwa kichwa yangu since then na nikabaki nazo okay kuna kitu me quote uh, mixed block na capital life ni different umesema capital ni stare mixed block ni it's just a normal life in prison mbona ni stare in capital sababu ikifika life in prison eh starehe inakuwa kwa consider na kitu kimoja mm. search terror okay msipopigwa terror sana marufuku inakuwa mingi okay marufuku ya zini sigara bangi simu mm. zinakuwa mingi okay. so capital walikuwa wanaaminika kwa sababu ni watu wa robbery ni watu wa hatari hatari so kupigwa search serikali ilikuwa haiendi huko sana mm. so unapata wako na masimu full time banki sigara everything okay. so it was somehow easy kwa wao okay. so wanajua kwamba murder cases si wote sana mm. so na wakija wakifungulia nyumba moja unapata ni everything mm. kama ni kwenda wataenda nayo yeah. lakini unapata hata nyumba moja ku control watu wanne ama watano it's very easy kuliko ku control watu 48 yeah. watu 48 hakuka watu hawezi kosa snitch hapo mwenye atasema simu zinaekwa mali fulani lakini hao watu sita ama watano kuelewana kwa eno nyenye ni haraka so okay. that's why capital na mix okay. kuna watu tofauti okay. so mimi sasa tukaanza kesi tuka sasa tulipo toka plea na baada ya kupewa bond ya 4 million tulipewa two good months hearing mm-hmm. first hearing first hearing mm-hmm. so zile two months yenye tulipewa sijui kitu hakuna mwenye kuna wakili hakuna chochote anything chenye uko na know how so weni ile unaambiwa tu na mjanja anakuambia wewe ukienda kotini itisha st- eh, statement hivyo tu itisha statement so tulipoenda kotini tukaitisha statement tukapewa tukajaribu kuomba bond ipunguzwe haikupunguzwa so it was like ah tabidi tu tuendelee na kesi mm-hmm. kesi yetu tulimaliza more than one year tukiwa tujaianza kesi na ni kwa sababu complainant alikuwa hakuji so uh, uko hivyo kwa mkibukiwa in, in, in police cell complainer mlikuwa na accounts ngapi count kwa charge na count mbili ya ule mmoja robbery with violence mm-hmm. ya complainant first complainant mm-hmm. the boss mm-hmm. na count two robbery with violence ya watchman ah okay yeah okay sasa ikawa it's very tough very tough life in prison ikawa kwangu mimi it's very tough lakini due the, to the support ya wale kwa accused mm. nikawa kidogo ameni patia morali kiasi mm. so nikajaribu ku move and it was that time sasa ikafika mahali tukafanya kesi actually in remand kwangu mimi life was not that hard mm. kwa so hapo tulikuwa tunaenda kotini mm. and i had to learn the prison way Eh, the prison way wachana na hii ya kuolewa kuolewa ni wewe mwenyewe ukitaka kuolewa utaolewa tu jela ukue <laughs> bibi ya mtu eh ukue bibi ya mtu lakini sasa njia ya marufuku mm. unaenda kotini umetumwa na mtu actually amekutuma five packets za sigara mm. roster hakuna sigara nyingine inaingia ya jela ni roster yeah. so hizi paketi tano kuna zile unazi, unazifunga unafunga paketi moja moja and you have to load them in your boot unazika kwa unazika kwa haga eh, kwa matako uko eh, the five packets ukifika jela mnagawanya nusu kwa nusu anachukua mbili na nusu wewe <laughs> unachukua mbili na nusu so, unazika <laughs> 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 kwa matako ah sasa <laughs> Maze life the roasters roasters in Akonga na 24 pieces uko 20 they are 20 zilipungua eh they are 20 pakiti zote za sigara sahi ni 20 20 mm. so huwa unaikanyanga eh. ile pakiti mpaka ikuwe flat uh-huh. flat kiasi then you roll it 
unairol kama design ya battery unaona battery hizi yeah, za torch ina, ina hivi hey. uh-huh. so ni ikue ndogo kiasi usije uh-huh. kakuumiza <laughs> then unabeba mafuta ya vaselin that's what we used so ni kama umejioa eh ni kama umejioa you have to marry yourself kwa sababu huo unaambiwa kwa lugha ya kijela there's one language yenye wao wanatumia usipoolewa usipojioa utaolewa okay yeah, yeah that, that's the slogan you know yeah <laughs> usipojioa utaolewa Utaolewa. so ikabidi nikaona afadhali nijioe kuliko kuolewa yeah. so that's what i did and nikaja manage to save until 10000 that's when i got my first phone so is it uh, to cover kwa nini packet stand uh-huh. umezifinya umeziroll uh-huh. <laughs> una after ku roll <laughs> unanunua nylon by that time nylon haikuwa band yeah. ilikuwa nylon bado ziko mm. zile nylon za sukari zile mm. ama zile za black mm. so kuna vile unaifunga it's only that hatuna hiyo kitu hapa ningekuonyesha yeah, yeah. mm. kuna vile unaifunga unaipaka mafuta vaseline and you have to force it yeah <laughs> you have to force it yeah you have to yeah, it's yeah. life yeah. So after kufanya hivyo I did it for quite almost a whole year ukienda okay, now mention mention eh, me, not even mention mention ilikuwa zinaenda 14 days lakini sisi tulikuwa tupeleka mention ilikuwa ni hearing one month two okay. months one okay. hivyo okay. so nika manage kwenda kwenda mpaka nika manage ku save up to 10000 na 500 ya line by that time safari com line ilikuwa na uzo wa 500 yeah, yeah. yeah it was very cheap by that time it's cheap yeah it was cheaper 500 ni cheap as as per now line ya safari kwa msa hivi 2k in prison eh, right now as i'm speaking 2k air tell me thou tell so me thou so pay inflation imepanda je eh au unajua imefanyika hivyo kwa sababu ya restrictions za registration ndio inafanya iko hivyo so nika manage kusununua simu yangu ya kwanza nikiwa jela that was a Nokia 1280 na hapo sasa ujue ni shaka sasa na wale watu wenye vile watu wanakwachua kukwachua kusikiza vile ile mtu ile Kiswahili anapewa amezawadiwa pesa ngapi and how it goes mpaka to a point ya kwamba umuibie mm-hmm. so i had learned it kwa so i'm very sharp mm. i had learned it within 2 to 3 weeks nilikuwa ni challan everything and that's when nili manage kupigia mtaja wa kwanza I can recall the first person kupigia he was from Kakamega. Mm. Anakuwa ni Thomas Musiki Kadima. Mm-hmm. He was a principal of a certain school mm. huko. And he listened to me. Lucky enough. By that time nilimwibia 44000. So the first day only to make Kiswahili gani. So Kiswahili it's usually very simple. Nimekupigia simu. Okay, usually call sana sana what we do or, or, or what we were doing in prison eh? mm. unapigiwa na Airtel as Airtel company mm. lakini huibiwi kwa Airtel yeah. siku zote mtu anaibiwa kwa Safaricom yeah. so umezawadiwa 50000 na maybe umetokana na wewe kuweka airtime mara kwa mara and maybe nakuuliza the last airtime top up uliweka kupitia Airtel money through pay bill ama ulinunua kwa duka mm. and it was like oh nilinunua kwa duka Oh then ilikuwa na nambari zetu za siri za ushindi and that's why imefanya nimekupigia si simu. By that time tulikuwa tuko na uwezo wa choose my numbers, tulikuwa tunafanya choose my numbers. So unapata namba ya Airtel yenye imekupigia 0783333444. So it was easy to confuse mtu. Yeah. By that time fraud ilikuwa haija nini mm. sana. Mm. So huyu mtu tunamwambia okay tunaona your line has been he is not active on Airtel money actually 70% of Kenyans who are to me at Elmani who are considered Mpesa. Mm. So unapata kweli anakuambia yeah siku si, mimi hata sijai tumia ya Elmani. So inabidi utupatie nambari yako yote yenye iko na uwezo wa kupokea pesa either ni yako ya rafiki yako ama familia. Mm. And he or she it shall be very easy mm. kwa ke yeye mm. kukupatia namba mm. yenye yeye anataka. Mm. And so akanipatia namba ya Safaricom. Yeah. Nambari ya safari kwa mikoa ni 0715909303 sisi sawa until today mkanga. yes mm-hmm. so ujamaa kuiba 
sasa nikamwambia akaniambia by the way niko na simu mbili si lazima nitenganishe kwa sababu lazima ndio uibie mtu kwa simu it's a must a separate is online mm-hmm. from one sim eh, from, from one, one eh. yeah. so ikabidi nikamwambia separate akaniambia hata niko na simu mbili actually and i have it with me here sasa hizo tulikuwa tumesubscribe free minutes nikampigia tukaongea na yeye so nikaanza kumpeleka Kiswahili vile sasa mtu anaibiwa by that time hmm. ulikuwa unapeleka mtu kwa Mpesa that is withdraw cash unamwambia sasa hapo kwa withdraw cash kuna wale wenye unawajaja withdraw cash how <laughs> so unamwambia okay we are withdrawing from the bank to your Mpesa line hmm. and we are using the ATM option so unajua ni watu kidogo sana wenye wanaelewa kwa withdraw cash ATM option yake hmm. inatumika vipi So in, instead ya kwenda from agent kipindiwa si kama sasa hii ni store number. Yeah. From ATM sasa hii tulikuwa tunatumia ATM ya 5555 ambayo ni ya Family Bank. 286286 ya Equity, 472472 ya Cooperative. Mm-hmm. So those were the mm, yeah, hizo ndio zilikuwa most common kwetu sisi. Lakini sana sana tulikuwa tunatumia 5555 ya Family kwa sababu it was easier ama ilikuwa accessible kwa wale watu ambao walikuwa wanatoa pesa ambao walikuwa na Nairobi na Mombasa. Okay. Sita wataja lakini. Mm. So 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 mkibio wasem kiwa jela hiyo you had also a link na wasem wako hapa nje. Huwezi ulikuwa huwezi bia mtu lazima ukue na link na mtu wa nje. Okay. So what we did ni unapeleka mtu kwa Mpesa with draw cash from ATM inamwambia enter agent number. So agent number yenye unaweka ni ya ATM. Okay yeye ni anafaa kutolea do. Mm. Akiklik okay na mwambia enter Mpesa pin hakuna mahali penye namuitisha amount. So kumconfuse it was somehow easier. So unaona hakuna mahali penye unaweka amount ya yeah, sisi ni bank ndio tunaweka amount. Okay. So ana ana give in vizuri. Akifinya okay after kuweka pin ya Mpesa inamwambia apply voucher from ATM alafu hiyo 555 555. So akiklik okay na mwambia send it for Mpesa to reply. So anasubiri message. Message yenye inakuja huwa ni message tofauti ziko mara mbili. Yeah ukiwa na less than 225 shillings message inakuja inakwambia failed mpesa is unable to authorize an equity atm authorization code whatever for balances less than 225 na nakupatia balance yako hapo chini hmm. lakini ukiwa na above 225 message kama haya huu mzee sasa alikuwa na 44440 something hmm. alinisomea message kuna hiyo i inaitwa aje hii e code ya ya Mpesa e, ya Mpesa mm. anakuambia kama ni QR ama RS mm. so ukisikia hivyo unakuwa makini very attentive ushachukua simu nyingine ya kutuma code kwa yule mwenye unatumia nje mm. and what i need ndio mimi ni kuibie kwa hiyo njia mm. ile yenye tulikuwa tunafanya it's your number peke yake balance and the code peke yake namba yangu ya simu hiyo namba yako ya simu code na amount So Peke yake. So, It's not a must to give me the Mpesa mean. So so hiyo ndio mnatumia ku swap. No. Okay. Kuiba peke yake, pesa peke yake. Okay. Hiyo ndio tulikuwa tunatumia. So ule mzee alipoanza kunisomea hivyo nikakuwa attentive nikachukua simu nyingine, nikaandika namba yake hash code unaweka katikati hash amount mwisho. Mm. So aliponiambia message ilikuwa inasema dear customer this code is your secret. Imepewa namba sita hapo in brackets then imeandikwa kwa Kiswahili ni siri yako mm. so unamconfuse hapo unamwambia ni siri yako na kampuni <laughs> hufai kushare na mtu mwenye yuko hapo karibu na wewe mm. so inakuwa okay ya yeah. anakusomea code alafu inaendelea kusoma message sasa hapo lazima urukishe huyo mtu kama yuko sharp lazima umrukishe asisome hapo kwa sababu hapo inasema to withdraw use this code to withdraw money from your Mpesa account at any iyo agent, agent yeah. within kipindi ilikuwa ni within 2 hours okay saa hii ni 4 minutes yeah right now ni 4 minutes kitambo ilikuwa ni 2 hours ikaja 10 minutes saa hii ni 4 minutes mm. so alafu sasa nikamwambia eh balance yako hapo chini before tuongeze 50000 ah unaanza kumuuliza kwanza balance yako imeongezeka kama bado so the man was not sure kama hata alikuwa akona pesa kwa Mpesa and he told me yes now na imeongezeka nikamuliza how much is it and he told me something 44000 mm. 440 40 or 41 i think 
and i was like oh so imeongezeka na ngapi kanambia i'm not so sure kama nilikuwa na pesa lakini i see imeongezeka so it was like hakuna pesa nyinyi tumetuma so that's actually his balance so what i did ni kuandika code na kutuma so atm by that time ya 555 mm. ilikuwa inatoa only haiwezi toa 40k and above ni so ni 40 so ile mtu kimtumia what they did walikuwa na kitu karibu na atm mostly ukimtumia code hivi anaingia kwa atm anaweka code anaweka amount mm. anafanya withdrawal okay. after withdrawal sasa anakurudishia message kama pesa imetoka anakuandikia ni 40k mm. so urudie tena yule customer kwa atm ndio utoe hii balance ya 1400 yenye imebaki <laughs> if not that ufanye kitu inaitwa kufinyesha kufinyisha that's when sasa unampeleka kwa send man mko na kitu inaitwa kirai mm-hmm. line it's registered and see idea mtu id from noya so hiyo ndio line inaitwa kirai eh hey, inaitwa kirai mm-hmm. so unafinyisha tu directly mpesa send money enter amount sasa so, hapa kwa send money to confuse someone instead ya kwanza na 07 huo unamwanza na 254 mm-hmm. kodi ya Kenya mm-hmm. so zinakuwa namba 12 yeah. so inakuwa ni ngumu kwa amount kama ako na 4400 humweke 4400 unamwambia andika 00 04 333 mm. namuliza na namba 6 eh ni 6 ah naweka okay weka pin anaweka pin kipindi hiyo smartphone ilikuwa ziko mingi yeah. so simu za buttons zilikuwa mingi so unajua simu ya button ukifinya mara tatu okay 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 inakwambia send it for mpesa triply kulikuwa kuna notification ya safari kwa hiyo wakati ya tu unaweza cancel <laughs> ukifinya okay ndio hivyo imeenda <laughs> Saizo nimekuwekea barrier mm. ya 35 kuna zidu za safari kwa lakini sasa hii wali deactivate inaitwa kwa barrier star 35 star 0000 hash hiyo ni barrier inakuzuia wewe kupokea message yoyote mm. huwezi pokea message yoyote kutoka kwa mtu yoyote so nimekufunga na hiyo alafu ndio wewe usifanye transaction nimekufungia na barrier ya 33 star 33 star 0000 hash So nikifungia hizo line yako it's not functional. Haifanyi kazi mahali popote. Huwezi piga, huwezi pigiwa, huwezi tuma message, huwezi tumiwa. You can do nothing. Mm. Ni lazima uende kwa safari kwa kufungulia mm. ama mimi nikufungulie. Mm. So ule mzee baada ya kusomea hiyo nikampiga bari ya 35. Nikarudi tena nikampiga 33. Nika confirm pesa imetolewa. Actually ukiweka mtu baria kama kuna message alikuwa apokee ukiwa umeweka baria ukifungua haingiangi inakuwa imepotea inakuja inakuwa kama flash mm. flash message mm. so nikamfungulia bari ya 35 nikamwacha 33 ndio asifanye transaction yoyote asi confirm balance mm-hmm. akijaribu ku confirm balance namwambia na not send again later so nikampiga bonoko bonoko sasa ni message ya Mpesa edit ni message ya Mpesa kwamba umepokea 25000 mm. so namtumia 25000 na ile balance yake aki confirm pale chini kwa message anaona eh Nani pepokea unasikia akafurahia yule mzee. <laughs> <laughs> Alifurahia sana. Sasa baada ya kufurahia unamtumia message ya pili sasa ya kumrichajisha sasa unamtuma kaeke pesa. Okay. And since niliona ako na ile eh 44000 na hata nikama nakaa hata hajui kama And alikuwa na pesa. So it means he is someone rich. Mm. Alafu lazima kwanza nimeconfirm ameniambia he is a principal wa seko. Mm. Nikajua okay, yuko sawa. So mimi nilimtumia message ya kumwandikia the second message sasa. Mm. Failed Mpesa is unable to receive 25000 due to insufficient network in your account. Mm. We are kindly um, oh, we, you are kindly advised to recharge your Mpesa account with 55,550 to enable receive the remaining balance in 5 minutes time <laughs> your new mpesa balance will be unamwisha sasa ile initial balance yake ile yenye alipokea kwanza na hii ya pili na hiyo ya ile inakuwa ameweka kama nikia hapo chini and he was like oh i guess i have a amount in my inventory oh the company okay fine how much is the balance i can be i'm not so sure but it's around 150,000 I. So what I did I had to kuondoka mahali penye nilikuwa niende sasa to a silent place mahali penye sasa nimemakinika vizuri it's like an office <laughs> hakuna kelele hata kidogo huyo yeah. mzee by that day i can say nilikuwa nimemuibia more than 200000 by jioni by jioni and it, this was your first time it was my first time 
So I was like, ah, life in prison. Ah, iko poa. I have money. <laughs> nikitaka kwenda mahali fulani ufungwani, nikitaka kwenda mahali popote, it, it, it's easy. Now at this time you're still in demand. Bado hujafungwa mahali. Bado sijafungwa. Eh, bado sijafungwa. Ndio sasa nakuja kuingia condemn sasa. Okay. Actually it was the ilikuwa ni wiki ya judgment. Mm. Ilikuwa ni wiki ya judgment. Okay. And I was like ah. Ah, vile judgment itasoma. Tabii <laughs> tunikubaliane na haya. Mimi niko sawa. Ah, mimi niko sawa. <laughs> I had money by that time and when you have money you are everything in prison kwa sababu mm-hmm. nalipa mpishi na mlipa maybe 300 per month ananiletea chakula mzuri actually by that time in prison nyama mia tatu. it's more than a kg more than even 2 kgs na imechomwa vizuri imekaushwa vizuri and you are like umepikiwa sukuma vizuri to everything what you need we eh i was like ah umenunua mattress <laughs> kubwa uko na smartphone ni ya phones zako kazi tu ni kutumana movie nje so unatuma nani movie nje so unatuma maskari eh hey. hey, unatuma tu askari so at this time pia usha gain access to like by that time interact na ma police by that time mm. ni me interact kwa so it's almost the third year Eh yeah, nimeinteract na wao zaidi yeah. alafu nikaja nikafanywa librarian bado kwa in demand ni kwa in demand hiyo the last week sasa mm-hmm. nikafanywa librarian na nikija kuingia condemn hiyo sasa baada ya kufungwa sasa nikawa bado na librarian lakini nikawa si attend sana kazi yangu tu ni hakikisha kwamba nimefungua asubuhi mm-hmm. vitabu zote ziko kama kuna mtu alichukua nijue hivi hivi na hivi mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. Na mimi nirudi block niende nikatoe simu yangu niendelee kukwachua. So tulipoenda so, the last week sasa mm. I was like hey judgment kusomewa nilisikia chenye yani nilisikia kwa hiyo judgment ambayo tulisomwa it was 6:40 pm in the evening. Mm. Ilikuwa inaelekea saa moja. Kwa tu mama alituambia you have been sentenced to death sentence and I was like mimi hata sikuchukulia uzito kwa sababu si kuelewa vizuri yani kwa nini you didn't kuelewa eh, the weight of the eh, sentence eh si kuelewa mimi hata nilikuwa naona tu ah death sentence okay fine tukaenda jela so the next morning sasa lazima uende documentation uende sasa kuto, utolewe remand office uye kwa documentation kila kitu kichukuliwe mm. sasa baada ya kuchukuliwa and like, like now sasa nishabadilishwa sasa si vaira hii tena niko na kunguru niko na kunguru stripes bonke la shati sasa hizo ujue niko mdogo na hakuna nguo ya jela yenye na shona ngwa boy size ya mtu yeah. nguo ya jela yote inakuwa imeshonwa inaweza toshia mtu mpana na mwembamba <laughs> eh kwa sababu kama nikiuno unavutaka ile kamba hivi yeah. eh hata kama kwa size ya hii kijiti itashika hivi <laughs> shati nayo ndio ile ilikuwa inafika kwa magoti mm. and i was like hapana hey, sasa kwa sababu niko na pesa nikalipana tailoring nikapeana hiyo material nikashonewa decent sasa trouser na shati mm. So, so so you been transport from uh, remand to now this other side uh just out and to mix now as the normal prisoners mnaenda on your block yenu nyinyi wase wa no shimolatewa hmm. shimolatewa is a prison yes. i can say haiko restricted okay. kama the other prisons in kenya mm-hmm. shimolatewa remand hizo wana shida ya ufungwani kondema na shinda mahali popote okay. mahali penye hesabu itakupata ni ya saa tano ni ya saa saba ni ya saa kumi hapo ndipo nahesabiwa okay. they have no restrictions ya kwamba ati rumande asifike kwa mfungo wa life ama hivyo oh, okay. 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 hawana hiyo mm. kidogo iko na kauhuru fulani so mimi kwangu mimi mikao tu naona life ina move lakini sikuwa naelewa kwamba I, I, i think it's still because was i was young mm. nilikuwa sijaelewa vizuri lakini sasa the moment ambayo sasa i was on my own my co accused persons kwanza wote wakapigwa transfer mm. nikaachwa niko peke yangu shimo mm. nikaachwa niko peke yangu shimo mm. and i was like hey life maze tukaje tukapigwa tero simu yangu ikaenda Life ikaanza kupanda. 
simu zikaongezeka simu ambayo ni adhao tao mm. mpya mm. 12 i guess kaleka simu ka 12 tu na kaelewa kaleka ka Nokia flani yeah it's 15000 what do you mean 15000 kenya shillings prison na si ati ni rahisi kupata hapana it's hard mm. so kuliletwa askari alikuwa anaitwa bongo bongo u bongo bongo he was one of the worst nightmares kwa wafungwa mm-hmm. alikuwa akisikika bongo bongo ndio amepita hapo everyone inabidi tu so akipita nini kuna happen <laughs> this guy mm akona ha 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 na ile roho ya utu ya ubinadamu okay he is the type of man who is mwambia eh bwana eh hii simu i just use it for survival labda hata mimi kazi yangu atasikwachwi mimi napigia tu familia yangu shika 200 niachi corruption haezi kubali never anaenda nayo hiyo lazima aende nayo i guess in kenya if we have someone who is not corrupt Yeah. Kabisa Kenya nzima ni huyo askari. Huyo <laughs> pek huyo mm. and he is like atuwezi sema watu wengi wanasema anatumia vitu zilizoitwa midawa mm. kwa sababu he is the type of person mkiwa mmesimama watumia hivi utaona amekuchagua wewe wewe eh wewe kuja. And 100% sure lazima atakutoa kitu. Oh. Yeah. Very tough hapendi na maskari wenzake kwa sababu ya kuangusha wale maskari wenye nao sasa wanaingia na hizi ma, marufuku mm. masigara nini amefutisha maskari kazi amepeleka wafungwa transfer so hapendwi kabisa did you have an encounter na yes what happened tell us the scenario baada ya kwamba tumenyongwa mm. tulipokuwa tunaenda high court mm makiuzi wangu walikuwa jela za juu okay. so wakaletwa shimo mm. so sasa appeal sasa appeal okay. ya high court mm. kwa judge mmoja alikuwa anaitwa Asna Dhongeri Mkisi mm. ana roho mbaya sana roho mama i can say kwa magistrate wote magistrate judge wenye nilipitia the final one alikuwa kidogo na roho mzuri mm. na si hata alikuwa na roho mzuri kwa sababu aliniachilia no alikuwa na roho mzuri kwa sababu alikuwa he had a listening ear anakusikiza whatever the case ni mbaya ni nzuri anakusikiza mm. lakini the rest they had they had no time ya kusikiza wewe mm. so huyu askari sasa kwa accused wameingia asubuhi na transfer ambayo imetoka manyani wameingia saa kumi, kumi na moja. so mm. kumaliza documentation kabla avaye nini nini it's only time ya kwenda koti And so he was like alikuja tu faster akaniletea dhao tano ya cash. Kanambia ni aje junior. Bwana yeye nishavaa tayari. Wewe ndio unavaa. Shika ido. Utanipatia tukiwa kotini ni nunue marufuku. Hmm. And he was like sasa. Sasa hizo mimi nishavaa. Mimi by that time nilikuwa napenda safari boot sana. Hmm. Nikavua safari boot. Kwa sababu so, kiatu moja ndio nilikuwa nimevaa. Nikavua yenye nyingine nikaona sasa na nishavaa na niko na haraka na tayari tunaitwa wacha tu niweke kwa socks chi niko kwa socks chi ah na tukaenda hapo mbele ya kimya tukaekwa pingu sasa ule askari yeye alikuwa akija kwa so most of the time encounter mingi zinyi alikuwa ananikuta nazo alikuwa anaweza nikuta na simu kumi, kumi na mbili, kumi na tano. <laughs> hizo simu zote sasa hizo ni eh ndio anaenda kuficha sasa mm. ama sasa hizo labda anipate na line kama mia tano hivi Eh hey. sasa mm. ikawa kama ni sigara akinipata nazo unanipata amenipata na paketi kama 50 hey, bro hey. hizo zote ni za mtu amejio <laughs> business was booming bro business in prison mm. by the way we told you not what Kenyans are supposed to understand one thing wafungwa they are very rich mm. wafungwa kwa nando wako na ndo na hiyo ndo yote si ati ni ya kutumiwa na wazazi wao ama family friends na pana mm. it's just got from kenyans okay sasa huyu jamaa nilipofika hapo kwa sababu sasa zile encounter zenye asha nikuta nazo mm. sasa hii ndio ilikuwa the worst eh akaingia kimya pap mimi tayari nikasikia nywele tu yani kuna vile ule askari ukiwa na kitu kimuona unasikia ai 
nikasikia tu mwili wangu na saa hizo jua niko na pingu tuko na mtu na saa hiyo majina tunaitwa eh akakuja akanisalimia kwanza anakusalimia na vizuri eh ah, tajiri <laughs> vipi bwana unaenda koti nikamwambia eh naenda koti bwana eh ah acha nikuache tu sababu nitakuaibisha sasa hii mm. so he was like ataniaibisha akawaambia awe bongo bongo nini bwana acha na mimi bwana acha niende koti bwana lakini mimi najua umekanyagia hebu vua hiki tu aye sasa ile najifanya ni confidence sasa najipatia unajaribu kufungua haraka ndio mwambie angalia au confirm kama there something sasa ile najaribu kufungua kiatu anaambia fungua fungua vua mpaka socks vua mpaka socks na sasa hizo ni, ni constable hana cheo nilipovua ile kiatu sasa nimevua ya opposite direction mm. akanambia hii vua na hii nyingine pia uvue kuna kitu umekanyagia hapo. Alinitoa dhao tano. Zenyezi kwa zangu. Na si zangu. Lakini kwa accused sasa ilibidi aelewe kwa sababu nilimwambia what do I do? Mm. Sasa waliniletea yes. Na siku wa mimi mahali penye nilikuwa nimeweka zangu ilikuwa ni mbali na unaelewa pesa ya jela mahali penye inafichwa. Mm. Pesa ya jela it's either ujioe ama ufanye kitu inaitwa pachupachu. Pachupachu na ni gani? Pachupachu ni ile pesa sasa what you do una roll tu kitu size ya kama unaona kama bet ya finger size yeah. yeah. bet ya finger size mm. una make sure tu una, una roll ile pesa hivi inaweza kuata kama 10k ama 20k lakini ni kitu tu kimbamba na kafunga na nylon alafu naifunga na tissue mm. then katikati ya nini hapo hivi hapo mm. ndo unaiweka <laughs> that's what you are doing sasa tishu na yeka ndio isiteleze kwa sababu si unajua kwa mwili unaweza yeah. sasa kwa sweat. Yeah. Sasa akanielewa. Na hiyo story ikatoka hivyo. I think nilikuja kwa mripea around 2000 baada ya muda. Mm. So nikakaa I try to fight my case using my money. So yeah, so, 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 so so e time yenye umetolewa 5k. Hiyo ndio anachukua naenda na. Yes, anachukua anapeleka kwa Xbit store. hata yachukue ya tumie na hata kupiga akupigi ah hiyo sheria hakuna siku hizi jela mm. hata ushikwe na nini jela ni ile tu inakuwa tu confiscated then wanaenda na that's all mmeniambia amekushika once na simu 14 na mara ya yes simu yes sasa alikuwa ananitambua kama tajiri okay. alikuwa every night then eh tajiri mimi hata alikuwa akiniona huyo mm. hata alikuwa tumetoka koti anasema ah acha nipe huyo tajiri bwana nipige tero <laughs> na ni kwa sababu so the time nilikuwa labda nitajisahau in any of the other lazima atanipata na kitu. Mm. So akawa ah. so e time yenye simu 13 ama simu 10 unapatikana nazo anazichukua tu anaenda nazo. Sasa most of the time unapata kwamba I have to fight back. Okay. Sasa unaweza pata kwamba hizi simu kama hizi 13 labda za hizo za hizo zangu ni 4 ama 5. Mm na mali penye handaki mali chimbo yenye tunaenda kuficha mm. lazima tufiche mali pamoja kwa so it's safe okay so labda amenipata ndio na chimba kwa so what we what we were doing mm. flow kama hii mm. as you can see a flow like this eh? concrete yeah. eh, concrete mm. lazima kuna vile mnatumana metal mnaletewa sururu chuma ama kisu mm. kisu za kuchongwa chuma mm. mtagonga until you find a point kama kashimo kama size hii. Mm. Na kwa sababu chini it's painted black eh? okay. So mnachimba kashimo tu kadogo. Lakini kwa hiyo mawe kwa sababu mawe ya jela si kama hii mawe hii. Mm. Mawe ya jela ni mawe yanakuwa na shimo katikati. Okay. Lakini ni mawe mbili, mm. moja moja. So it's very hard ku, kutoboa Penetrate. lakini eh, kupenetrate lakini hivyo hivyo mnaichimba. Mm. So mnaichimba 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 mnapata nafasi ya kuweka simu kumi. Okay mkishapata nafasi ya kuweka simu kumi, kifuniko yake it's either mnini msugue mawe mm. masand pepa nini mfit mm. if it's not that sasa nimekwambia chini iko black yeah. una kuna zile viatu zinaitwa yebo yebo maflota hizi crocs mm. Mm. za black okay. so mnaikata mambo ni mawili kiwi ya rangi hairus jela lakini sisi tulikuwa tuko na natural kiwi za ambazo anasema tutumie. 
unachukua makaa unaisaga mm-hmm. unachukua sabuni hii ya kipande hii mm-hmm. the normal jamaa whatever soap yeah. unachukua unaiweka kwa maji for some time inakuwa kama tope hivi yeah. unachukua ma- ile unga unga yako ile finest mm-hmm. una mix inakuwa kama mafuta ya vaseline mm-hmm. so kishaeka ile yebo yebo ile kifuniko sasa mm-hmm. you do the mm-hmm. plastering <laughs> eh, unafanya plaster mm-hmm. Alafu una make sure wewe mwenyewe unamulika hivi na kitu naona haiziona <laughs> haiziona <laughs> so wakija wanatafuta everywhere if not that mnatoboa floor the same same ndio mnafanya so kwa floor kwa so floor haiko smooth kama hii ajela mm. kuna vile iko sama urafu mm. so ilikuwa unachukua mchanga wa kujenga unachanganya na sabuni na sabuni kuwe kuna hizo sabuni ambayo tuseme rangi yake it's ama kama kibrown ni brown ya eh so hiyo ndio mnachanganya nayo hiyo ni sabuni ya kujitengenezea nyumbani eh so ile mna mnapiga hivi so it's a very hard to not mm. so ilikuwa mimi tukikutana na yeye most of the time alikuwa mara mpaka ningoe kitu so i had to adjust it's either to pigane pigane na yeye hapo ni manage kukimbia ni service mali niende sell 14 days Eh, yeah, like physical. Eh. Yeah. Ilikuwa lazima kwa sababu ya nini? Simu kumi is 150,000. Yeah. Na kiluzi simu kumi sawa wale wengine wataelewa kwamba zimeenda na tero. Hakuna hiyo complaints ya kwamba ati mm. ulipeana simu no. Wataelewa lakini 150,000 is lost. Yeah. Recovery ya hii 150,000 ni vipi? Hiyo ndio inakuwa shida. So it's either I fight back nirushe simu zichukuliwe anichukua nipeleke cell 14 days. Yeah. Nimalize cell 14 days nirudi kiwanja. Kwa so, jela kuna jela nyingine ndani. Yeah. Kikosea lazima unaekwa cell. So mimi nika move and it was when sasa hiyo 2017 ah 2016 hapo nilikuwa nishaanza kufutavuta unga sasa heroin hiyo niliponyongwa L- lakini sasa yani huwa kwa lugha ya kiteja huwa tunasema mm. gari ilikuwa bado haijanguruma okay yani addiction ilikuwa bado haijaniingia mm. kwa sababu nilikuwa naweza vuta kama miezi mbili nice. nikaacha hivyo mpaka people were like hey how Derek anavutaka dawa Junior anavuta dawa alafu anaacha kwani mwili wake damu yake iko vipi kwa sababu so addiction ime zorotesha wengi hakuna hajawahi acha lakini little did i know kwamba addiction mimi ilikuwa haijaniingia so i was like nilivoanza kupata pesa mingi laki laki mbili laki tatu when i'm in prison and i'm like sina family mwenye nitatumia mom hata sijui hata namba yake ana ah, nishapiga mahesabu having a life sentence condemn death sentence sasa ni wapi naenda mm-hmm. prison is home so i became comfortable na nikaona ah, let me now use the money mm-hmm. sasa naona sina si na mtoto nasomesha sina kazi nafanya and i was desperate to a point ya kwamba sijui ni lipi mm-hmm. lenye ati nitafanya in future lenye kwangu mimi ati naweza kuja toka nje ya jela kwa hiyo sababu chenye kwa kinanipatia desperate ni kwa desperate kabisa ni kwa sababu tulikuwa na watu ambao 28 years 30 35 years in prison mm-hmm. na walikuwa wamefungwa condemn wakaja life kama vile mimi so it was like hata mimi nitafika tuko 35 years sasa itakuwa ni future gani niko nayo sina watoto raia sikuwa cha bibi I, i have nothing hivyo so so for you uli shall just eh i had just adjusted na nikaamua tu i just with the norm ya huko mm-hmm. so nikavuta unga nikavuta unga actually i became the person with the highest dose hata ukiuliza mabeshti kama wewe unaitwa sikia anaitwa Vicky mm. ameniuzia unga sana nilikuwa mteja wake mkubwa sana <laughs> nilikuwa <laughs> na but you guys come to watch story of Vicky story of Vicky ndio eh mwende mu watch story of Vicky Vicky alikuwa anakuzia unga as in heroin yeah shit eh, by that time Viki alikuwa pia ni tajiri kwa yeah. sababu Viki alikuwa ha consume chochote aina ya mihadarati by that time nikimjua hmm. and he was like anauza magram si maketo najua unga heroin lazima ikue 
subdivide kidogo kutoka kwa gram then uzwe kikete kete ni 100 inaweza to such as kule to eh lakini sasa hii ya grams so si tulikuwa tunavuta unga mimi kuna jamaa mmoja anaita kwa mbai mwalimu mbai he is still in there kuna yule alikuwa anaitwa Ken Misoi mbai mbai alitoka kamiti ya kapele kuko ah ni mbai mwingine huyo hajai ya Rwanda kuna huyo anaitwa Ken Misoi a graduate kuna Newton Joroge a graduate lakini ni maremu alipasi yake wa jela eh very painful death alikufaje I'll, I'll explain to you okay so si tukavuta unga tukavuta dawa tukavuta dawa tu appoint ya kwamba tukauza simu zetu sote zenye zote mlipo pesa ni baada kwamba zile pesa zote zenye mtu ume save kwa malines mm. ikaisha and you are like umeamka asubuhi you have no shilling huna chochote and you are like ah, niko na simu tano unaenda unauza moja 15000 ikifika jioni hiyo ndio imeisha ushaivuta yote eh ushaivuta yote kwa sababu dozi ni ya gram tano, sita gram tano, it's all it's it's 10000 gram tano, kwa sababu gram ni 2000 hujanunua roster okay. and the worst thing is that hatuvuti na rizla tunavuta na bible biblia mnakata nini ya bible bible bible. bible bible unaona zile ndogo za new testament zile mm. zile ndogo mm. hiyo bible ndio tulikuwa tunavuta nayo unga juu te, te, texture yani texture yake ni, ni eh, alafu zilikuwa easily available kwa sababu Joyce Meyer alikuwa kileta hiyo mm-hmm. ministry Joyce Meyer ministry zilikuwa ikileta mm-hmm. SDO alikuwa analeta sasa kulikuwa na donation ya mingi lakini kama zimepungua actually lazima ununue hiyo bible mia ya kuvutia eh so full time ukinipata tu unaweza fikiri <laughs> eh ukinipata mahali unaweza fikiri eh huyu jamaa ayo mokovu kwa sababu nini uwezi ni kosa na bible actually mateja wote in prison lazima utampata na bible mse yote anachoma nini eh yote kwa sababu rizla is haiko available kupatikana so tulikuwa tunavuta na bible mpaka eh, sasa chenye nilikuwa niko na hofu nayo ni ile tukilelewa tukiwa wadogo tuko na mbao ukichoma biblia tu hiyo cheche itakurukia kuchome na utakufa and I was like sasa unajua unga unga huwa na change mtu mentality and you are like you are not seeing even it's a sin or something bad oh no it's just normal mm. so si tuka tunavuta dawa tunavuta dawa and that's that's the time ile fika tu point sasa nimeuza simu zote nimeuza nguo zote sabuni bag mattress hey. kila kitu yenye hey. usha build eh hey. nikaanza kulala chini kwa blanket trust sasa ikaanza kukosekana vile nilikuwa naweza kutuma bwana nenda i5 pewa maziwa mbili na mkate ulikuwa huwezi enda ukapewa ni nani ni junior amekutuma ah mwambie aeke pesa trust ikapungua na ikatoka ikaisha kabisa mm. and i was like sasa kwa wale wenye hawajui kwamba nafuta unga nianze kuwatapeli sasa mm-hmm. Niende kwake anipatie ni kule missing. Lakini sasa kwa lugha ya kuongea na simu kuibia wa Kenya. Nilikuwa niko nayo mimi, huyo Newton na Ken Misoi. Mm. Hawa wawili ma graduate lakini they were my best friends. Ona ni kwa sababu tulikuwa tuna cop vizuri. Mm. Kazi ya librarian nikaacha kabisa. Ukaachishwa. Eh nikaachishwa kwa sababu by that time kuna vitabu vitabu ma magazine mingi ilikuwa zinaanza kupotea na kwa sababu naenda na imejipin natoka nayo naenda na user mia hiyo ni kete moja hivyo sasa natafuta mtu mwenye ana kete moja tunapiganisha donzi hizo ni kete mbili mm. roster roster ilikuwa ni chwane roster mm. moja ni 50 sasa hii roster kama imeshuka sana i think roster ni mia kama imeshuka mm. roster ya 10 bob uko nje jela ni so mm. so nika move ah. sasa matajiri kadhaa ambao walikuwa na simu mingi wakawa sana sana wanataka either mimi Misoi Newton lazima tufanye kazi kwa kampuni zao kwa sababu tu we were the best <laughs> kampuni eh yeah, 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 ni kampuni wase wa jafungua kampuni je ni kampuni na ni kwa sababu hmm. by 2018 hmm. kurudi nyuma hmm. 
kabla hizi restrictions za safari kwa mzianze kabla unaona kutoka enzi ya Bob Collimo ilipoanza mm. jela ndiyo ilianza kufilisika kwa sababu chunguza since enzi ya Bob Collimo safari kwa mkuu kutoa promotions it's very hard yeah. enzi ya Maremo Michael Jackson sorry eh, Michael Jackson yuko hai mm. Michael Jackson Jackson kurudi nyuma promotions ilikuwa every year nasikia kuna zawadi fulani ya safari kwa hivyo mm. so it was very easy ku confuse wa Kenya kupitia hiyo njia okay. na ilikuwa kuna restrictions mingi registration was easier code ilikuwa zinatoka si kama saa hii so saa hii kuibia mkenya ni ile yani huyo lazima aibiwe so lazima so baada ya ku move hivyo sasa so, wase wanataka uwa wakio kampuni eh eh e, e, nataka unajua ni kampuni nimekwambia ni kampuni kwa nini mm. mtu mwenye by that time alikuwa kwa na simu kumi jela amezidi we mwenye kwa na matatu 30 raia mbona matatu i guess kwa siku ina suppose kupeleka 3500 yeah. kama 4500 mm. na simu moja na kuingezea more than 50000 so yeah. simu moja yeah how sini kuiba tu na simu kukuachua wa Kenya so tuseme uko na simu kumi. Ume, ume, mimi nikiwa na simu kumi. Mm. nikiwa kwa siku kwa sababu this is what we do mm. ukiba 20000 yenye itatumwa kwa mashini mm. yule mtu anakula commission ya kwa dhao anakula 200 okay. so anatuma 16000 mm. 16000 8000 ni yangu 8000 ni atajiri mwenye simu so na e, okay. lakini wewe kidogo uliyeiba ndio unakuwa na advantage kidogo kwa sababu yeye ujue aliweka airtime mm. na simu ana suppose kulipia mahali penye nafichwa okay. so kidogo wewe lakini shida ni anauza unga na wewe ni mteja so <laughs> obvious kabla waze kazi asubuhi umetolewa lock ya almost 2000 gram moja na roster tano So almost 2500 imekufa. So sai dosi wako ilikuwa ni viki. Ah ah. Okay. Viki ni ile wakati sasa mimi mdosi wangu alikuwa anaitwa Elvis Masinde. Okay. Nikaja kuna jamaa mmoja pia aliuawa alikuwa tajiri yangu alikuwa anaitwa Sir John. Tuko na muda Sir John Ogola. He was the richest man in prison. In prison. Na unasikia hiyo Sir it's like how in england how huo unafikia mahali ambako unaitwa sa mm. it's the same same thing alikuja kupewa sa in prison kwa sababu he was the he, he was na as a he was a man ambaye alifika to a point of kuwa na simu jelazima more than 500 pounds counting of up to 5 million in a day what yes kwake kwa kitabu cha madeni cha mateja wale mateja yenye asubuhi pesa yenye wamevuta ndio waanze kazi mm. unaweza ona ni 1.3 million 1.4 1.6 na hiyo pesa ina suppose kwa repaid by, by, by jioni ndio kesho uingie kazi na so hii biashara yote inaendelea ina jela na wakubwa wajui acha nikwambie mm. there is one thing ambao watu wana suppose kuelewa mm. As long as kuna mfungo na kuna askari it will never end. So, Hata serikali wafanye nini mm. it can never end. So so wafungo wafungo wanashikania anga na makarao. Yes kwa sababu ya nini? Mm. First thing huyo askari amekuja ni constable. Mm. Ako na bibi ako na watoto wanasomesha. Analipwa mshahara wangu pesa ngapi akiwa anaanza job? Mm. That is something. That is something. Yeah huyo mtu umemtupa shimo la the first thing wengi wanapenda starehe hmm. mtu hapa iko hapo anataka huyo mtu alewe anataka wanawake hmm. sawa hmm. ako na bibi nyumbani na ako na watoto school fees peke yake na maisha yake haitoshi hiyo pesa first thing hmm. akija hapa ameambiwa alete pakiti moja ya roster apewe dhao pakiti ya roster by that time ilikuwa ni 70 bob na amepewa That. pesa ya kununua hii dhao ni yake ya kuleta amepewa pesa ya kununua okay so ye, ye na kula tu profit eh huyo mtu atakataka kuleta bwana akileta heroin gram hamsini akona 20k na gram hamsini it's something ambayo hata nika kitu kadogo sana yeah. na inabidi ataleta 
ataleta na despite all this ni kwamba wakubwa ndio wanafanya kai kazi smartphones saa hii na kuhakikishia one thing go to prison simu zenye ziko prison na 100% sure mfungwa mtu wa mwenye nje hameliki na huyo mtu ni mfungwa iPhone 13 get it in prison na inaenda leo kesho mtu ameingiza nyingine right yes so mimi tuka move so nikafika mahali sasa desperation sasa imekuwa sasa hata ile trust imeanza kupungua kwa sababu wajua kuiba nayo kwa simu si ya tumeandikiwa kila, kila siku lazima taiba kuna mm. siku yenye si ya bahati mafuta yako nayo sana mm. so inafika mahali mpaka kwa siku unapata umedenga sana mpaka hata kazi hujafanya so inakuwa ni lawama haya ubaya unakuja unaingilia wakatambua tero imekuja simu zimeenda zote zote and you are like sasa mmerudi hapo and that day umeamka bila even a single cent pia wasonko pia mnatulia na yetu eh mnatulia kwa sababu mpaka mngoje atumanye simu zingine ziletwe mm-hmm. so mtu umetulia hivi huna cha kuvuta kwa sababu tajiri haezi peana unga na kuna kazi inayofanywa so inabidi mkae and that time security ya jela ikao imekwa tight sana Hakuna simu zinaingia jela. Tukaka more than one week. Tripo kada more than one week. Hapo 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 transfer. Nikaitwa transfer eh mm-hmm. manyani. Tuliitwa transfer saa kumi na moja jioni. Sasa tumeitwa mimi, huyo Newton, Misoi na jamaa wengine tulikuwa around 20 something. Mm. Pap manyani tunafika manyani baridi yenye koko imewaka moto hivi huna roster huna hata kete moja hiyo heroin you have nothing wewe ni hata hujabeba hata bag kwa sababu unabeba nini wewe ni mteja chenye umevandi uko nacho that's all kufika manyani kuangalia environment tv hakuna mtu yote namjua i'm the youngest sina hata ndefu mimi ndefu nimemea baada ya kutoka jela. <laughs> yeah. So that was the first encounter in prison my worst times. Nimekatu hivi manyani hivi chini. Sasa tushamaliza documentation. That was the first time. Mwanaume alini face. And I was like Ah, hata siku fesiwa hivyo. Kuna majamaa alikuwa anavuta sigara. By that time alikuwa anavuta sigara. Lucky enough right now mimi situmii raibu wote mm. thanks to god. Mm. Ujamaa hapo walikuwa wanavuta sigara. So unajua ukiwa na hamu ya sigara na wewe ni mteja lazima utangongea bwana hiyo bro pafu mbili. Ah, and that guy aliniangalia hivi and he was like ah njoo njoo kuja kaa hapa. Unavuta sigara eh. Akazama kwa mfuko. Ah amafanya hivi shika kanipatia hapa kitu moja na kiberiti ya gas kiberiti ya gas ambayo 25 fura hii jela manyani ni punch 500 mm-hmm. so akanipatia aliponipatia siku na ile akili ya kujiuliza how comes jela mm-hmm. pa kitu moja roster it's more than 5000 manyani without state na kupea bure eh amenipea bure kwani kunaendaje hapa sikufikia hiyo i was like he was just friendly kwa sababu mimi nilikuwa sija interact na watu ile at sana kujua hii mambo ya kijela how it happened. Mm. Mimi nilikuwa nafanya tu kusikia sijawahi shuhudia, sijawaiona, sikuwaielewa. Mm. So ujamaa akaniuliza na mbona unapiga miayo? Unajua ukiwa mteja unatoa machozi full time unapiga miayo. Mm. Kaambia mimi ni mteja. Nikasikia ameita jamaa alikuwa anaitwa Pato. Pato, nyaji, kuna magram eh. Kam akaita mse fulani hivi alikuwa anaitwa Kijibwa kama Tanzania mm. mteja pia Kijibwa vipi kama chukua kio na kijiko na kibiriti ya kibiriti yako naye sasa kio ni sahani mm. ile yenye natumia yeah, kusaga unga yeah. eh mm. so akaja akaambua choma kio kachoma kio kuchoma kio pato akaambua mpatie gram 2 hizo ni 1000 I was like eh I was like eh 
kiberiti punch hey. ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> leo hapa huyu simoni poa mimi sasa unajua kwa sauti mteja ai hizo wewe fikiri anga baadaye lakini for the time being wacha nipone <laughs> ah, roast no my bro yeah, yeah. i know ah, mimi nikatenye nika bible faster roast kafirikicha kata filter wekewa nikaroll nikawasha kitu hey, it was the best quality ai nikavuta eh hey, nikasikia yani niko fit sasa hizo hata mtu akija tunaweza pigana <laughs> ene nikakaa sasa akaniuliza mlitoka shima saa ngapi nikamwambia saa tisa usiku mm. oh ulikula jana jioni nikamwambia yeye nilitoka tu kikula huko kananiambia um, kuna mpisha alikuwa anaitwa kula unone <laughs> kula unone eh kula unone akatumana huyu jamaa he was rich by that time huyu jamaa alikuwa rich na alikuwa well fame manyani sana anajulikana akatumana kula unone So kula unone akaniletea mchele ya kuchoma. Hizo mchele za kuchoma inauza kwa so. Kwa kwa yule mluru, si unaelewa mluru? Mm. Mluru ni ile ndipo ni eh yeah. inakaa kama kisufuria hivi yeah. lakini ni ndefu hivi. Yeah. Kaletewa mzima hapo. Iko na mafuta mengi. Viazi nini everything. Yaani imepikwa poa tamu sana. Mm. And by that time wale ambao walikuwa ni wajinga jela mtu alikuwa anatongozwa na hiyo. Yeah. Hiyo peke yake ilikuwa inatosha kutongoza mtu. <laughs> so mimi nikajipiga vizuri kwanza. Akauliza unga imebaki kiasi gani? Nikamwambia kama gram moja. Pato. Mongeze gram tatu huyu. Hai. Hai. ule misoi. Misoi he is a graduate lakini he has been to prison every night then. Mm. Kwa sababu ni mtu by the way mama yake ni human resource survivor I think. Okay. Na ni mtu alikuwa akienda prison miaka 3, 4, 5 raia mwaka hivyo. Mm. Lakini was a best friend kwa sababu he is the type of person ambaye hata akiwa amevuta unga tukikaa chini we are in a position to compile things tunaongea edi yani za masomo. Yeah. So yani hata kama tunafanya hayo yote lakini despite kuna, kuna vitu kidogo tunafanya. Yeah. So nikamuita Misoi na Newton. Bwana akamwambia jamaa kaeni hapa. Mm. Kaya tusikize mjinga hapa. <laughs> Tukajipiga mchele wetu vizuri. So, so sasa hii ushashika ni sharada sasa. Eh hey, ah nisha hapa nishaelewa na Misoi ashaniambia bwana e huyo amekumind wetu ili ankonye sharada. Eh. <laughs> 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 And sasa nikasema okay Wacha tuone mwisho wake. Mm. So manyani kulala kengele ya kupigwa jioni kulala huwa ni saa tisa kwa sababu unajua iko katikati ya mbuga ya nyama. So safety mm. ya maskari na nyua fungwa huwa by saa tisa mshakula kuingia ndani saa kumi kamili mko ndani. Walitengeneza fence ama tu ni venye unaona ngabuga la wanyama. Unaona tu ni fence ya waya tu okay. waya tu sengenge tu ni something hata ndovu akija akitakuja kunywa maji anakuja tu anapita na anakuja kunywa maji. Uh-huh. Eh. Sasa hiyo kisema kufika hiyo saa kumi kengele kigongwa hivi mm. eh nikaona ule jamaa mara anaenda kwa trustee huyu anaenda kwa trustee huyu anaenda kwa kinara wa kiwanja kumbe anapigania ajue mimi niko nimepangwa nyumba gani anihamishe anilete wapi Kwa-ke. mimi sasa hizo mimi manyani nimepangwa compound zero mm-hmm. yeye ako compound 2 kutoka compound zero kuna compound 1 compound 2 ye compound 2 number 7 mm. mimi nilikuwa compound 0 number 4 tuko na misoi nyumba moja niito na compound 1 asile jamaa mimi misoi akaniambia nini hapa hakuna kutoka umesikia eh sasa mimi nikakoma sasa si tukavuta maunga yetu tukavuta maunga yetu mara kidogo Derek Kariuki Kamau the reason ya kwa nini hii jina Kamau mimi ilinge it's because Sikuwa na ID that time mm. na nilijitanisha na ule baba mlezi. Okay. Though nilipotoka that's why sasa nili apply ID na jina ya mamangu sasa. Mm-hmm. Sasa ikawa sasa niliposikia jina nikaangalia huyo uh, trustee alikuwa anaitwa Arsenal. Kipara ilikuwa imefika huko. 
Chukua vitu zako. Compound 2, number 7. Eh. Nikamuliza, mimi peke yangu? Akanambia, eh. Ah, nikamwambia uongo. Eh. Reinforcement hapo kwa hapo matrust wengine nikatolewa nje. Mm. Lakini sasa huyu Ken Misoi ni wale watu nasikia kwa jela. Alafu sasa ni mtu amesoma. Kizungu yake huyo jamani kama PLO. <laughs> Nikajama kembamba sana kadogo. Mm. Ni kama kizungu yake ni kama PLO. Very educated by the lakini yuko prison mm. addict. And he was like akasema never never intentions zenu as you end through it's either you take me with him ama abaki hapa mm. alafu unajua sasa ashatembea jela mingi anajulikana nikamtuka kisirani mm. and he was like ah itabidi muende na yeye kaambia fit <laughs> compound 2 mm. mm. tulipofika compound 2 eh nikapata ule mzee ametumana manyama kibao chipo nini eh hey. hey. <laughs> hey, nikajiuliza bro sasa misoi ananiambia nini hey. Unaona hii sherehe ukipiga mm. na wewe unapigwa sherehe. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like sasa itabidi tu nijikaze. Mm. Lakini sasa misa anaambia nini bro? Hizi tunakula na hakuna kitu sawa? Sawa. Sisi yao kati ya ndani. Tukajipiga vizuri. Sasa unajua uzuri huu msee nilikuwa nishamwambia huyu ni bro na kwa sababu tunatoshana mili mm. sura zinafanana ah nikamwambia ni bro sasa atuacha nangi huyu ndio maana tunaona tumeletwa sote akanambia hata ina shida ina shida mm-hmm. ha nyiku leni mm. by the way that means so he, he is almost 40 years lakini ni kale kamili mm. eh mm. sasa tukaikula vizuri akasema sasa unajua unga kwa sababu tulikuwa hiyo room ni ya 28 people Alafu yeye kwa sababu jamani tajiri ako na bezi ya kona. Mm. Alafu imepangwa mitungi mpaka mitungi ya za kwanza, alafu mitungi za pili. Hivi. Mm. So imebaki tu kana nafasi ka kuingia, alafu imewekwa net kama nyumba imefungwa na makaten. Okay. Na mattress. Alafu sasa unajua hawa ni wale wasi ambao wamenunua mattress. So na zile za admission ya form 1, lakini yeah. zile za blue. Mm. So ni mattress moja, alafu moja imekatwa nusu. Mm-hmm. So ile mattress inatoshana around kama ya 4 by 6. Mm-hmm. Alafu sasa amenunua mattress kama tano. So hiyo mati yake density yake ni, <laughs> ni kubwa. kitu kubwa. Yeah. Hey. Alafu huyo mse bado kwa hiyo nyumba yeye alikuwa amenunua TV. <laughs> eh, hey, hey, nikaona eh hey, hii. Mm. Ah ah. Ah sasa kasema upo ndio huko sitakaga watu wavutie unga. Kwa sababu yeye bado ndiye alikuwa in charge wa hiyo nyumba. Mm. Ndeni mvutie unga upande wa kule. Ukimaliza kuvuta njoo ulale. <coughs> Kaambia sawa. Sasa mahali penye misoi alipangwa kwa hapo yake kwa kulala. Mm. Tukaenda kuvutia unga hapo. Tukavuta, tukavuta, tukavuta. Mala ule jamaa anainuka, anaenda chooni. We. Sijui ulale. Ai. <coughs> Nikajiuliza, <coughs> nikamuuliza. Sasa misoi kabila muuliza, "Eh hey bro, kwani rada? <coughs> kwani si akitaka kulala atalala tu?" Atiwezi yojaongea na wewe. And he was like sasa nakuwa furious. Eh, mimi sasa akamwambia bro, kama unataka kuoa huyu, ah hapo umegonga mwamba. Huyu aoleki. Huyu aoleki. Then mm. sasa ikabi sasa kwa sababu yeye alikuwa ananiona mimi ni mdogo sana. Mm. Sina ile thinking na sina thought ya what can happen nini. Mm-hmm. Na ikabidi sasa the next morning anirushe nyumba nyingine tofauti sasa omse eh ameona nini intentions zake azienda ameona hapo azienda na sasa hizo ujue kabla ifikia hapo nilikuwa nishachukua almost gram kumi. <laughs> tumekula nimechukua dhao tano ya cash <laughs> nimechukua chukua vitu kadhaa ambayo you must do that to survive yeah. though kuolewa hapana mm. eh hey, bro hai hiyo i see sasa <clears throat> tuka move vizuri lakini sasa life in manyani became hard and harder kwa sababu manyani it's not as easy kama shimulatewa ama kamiti manyani it's very tough uliniambia hakuna prison unjatembezwa yeah out of the seven maximum tuseme maximum ni kama ni sita main mm-hmm. maximum kuna shimulatewa 
Kamiti Manyani mm -hmm. na Ivasha Kibosko Diaga Kingongo. Mm -hmm. They are seven. Lakini Malindi after upgrade ni main lakini sana sana watu pia wanapelekwa transfer sana. Okay. So Manyani nilika almost around two and a half months mm. na ule mseko so alikuwa na do na mini mekata mamba yake. Mm. So ikabidi ya kanilipia. Kaenda kahongana. Nitupe transfer. So, so yule, yule mse fulani. Yeah, yule mse fulani sasa. <laughs> Nikatupa transfer kamiti. Kufika kamiti bati nzuri nikakutana na beshte. Jamaa tu from noya anaitwa bonte. Mm. Alikuwa na mwizi wa bunduki pia. Tukajuana tu ni mteja. Hivyo hivyo akanishow rada kama jinsi sasa unajua kamiti it's usually the most advanced prison in terms ya wizi. Mhm. Mm kamiti ndio wajanjizi wengi zaidi wako hapo. Mm -hmm. So akanionyesha njia nyingine tofauti ya kuiba. Sasa tukaanza sasa ni kuuza maploti. <laughs> hewa, magari hewa vitu kama hizo. The problem with kamiti ni kwamba siku kapia even more than a month transfer. Naibasha. So, so, so mkiwa kamiti, uh, umepatana um, say after how long? Ubonte. Yeah. Hata nilifika the first day, the second day. Unajua yeye, sababu ya urafiki ni, mm. nilitoka na unga manyani. Ah. Na kamiti, kete moja ni punch. Mm -hmm. Rosta moja ni punch. Mm -hmm. Bangi seji, lakini kipindi yangu miilikuwa ni punch pia. Mm -hmm. Although the prices the easy video was in a vary, kwa sababu, at a times kamiti, Mm. Unaweza pata ni punch zingine dhao saa zingine punch ni sababu availability ya availability ndio inafanya zina hivyo lakini azishukagi hapo punch yeah. sasa huyu <coughs> jamaa mm. ikaa sasa kufunza kuiba eh hey, amenifunza <laughs> lakini bahati nzuri ama mbaya transfer so utapata chance ya kuiba mashamba kuuza shamba ah, hiyo sikupata ta chance okay kwa sababu i was still in the learning process okay na ndio hiyo mimi nimetupwa na Ivasha. Mm. Na Ivasha sasa I think it's the biggest prison. Na Ivasha ni kubwa, watu ni wengi, blocks ni mingi za gorofa. Na Ivasha kila mtu anaenda kwa line. Ni mfungo wa life ni namba ni transfer ni trust anyone. Although by that time officer inchaji alikuwa anaitwa Kirenya Mwenda. Mm. Mm. We huyo mse rongumu rongumu <laughs> ilikuwa harufu wacha rosta ionekane harufu yake isikike ah ndugu yangu mtaalala mkoo mmenona rungu lazima itawanonesha <laughs> rungu lazima itawanonesha harufu ya rosta peke yake <laughs> ah kukaka sasa unajua kutoka kamiti jela za juu from na, past Nairobi kupanda juu mm. transfers they are usually every week every week hivyo <laughs> naivasha sijakaka hata sija hata hata kadi yenyewe sijaandikiwa sijamaliza a week Rrr, kibos ai kibos sikumaliza week sasa unajua the worst thing ni huyu jamaa ile pesa ya nilipana manyani warranty yako wewe inaekwa kwamba wewe ni sumbua na wewe si sumbua So utaanza hivi until urudi ile jela yenye ulitoka ndio mm. unakuwa na peace. So kibos kodiaga. Kodiaga hapo I meant low people man. Eh hey, bro. <laughs> Awelewi lugha. Kuna wafungwa well, awelewi lugha. Alafu sasa there are people that hawajaekelewa kesi yenye yako nayo. Unajua mali kama shemo la toa can say 60%. Wamekelewa. Oh, ni mtu ambaye ameenda jela with nothing hajui totally hajui lakini in kibos kodiaga hata kamiti 100% sure 80% amefanya kesi za mada na robbery 80% ni mtu amefanya kamiti na hizi jela za juu mm. defilement kienda coast province watu wote ni wako jela defilement cases na raping cases 90% hawajafanya hata hawajui kitendo lakini because of some issues and some things sasa nikiwa kodiaga nikaanza za kuchora sasa nikaanza za kuongea na misoi nichore sasa ni vipi sasa nitarudi wapi Mombasa hapo mm. za hizo niko desperate hata mtu akiniambia niandike sasa hizo atalikuwa si tusha tupo on high court mm. niandike apili ya court of appeal hata naona sasa unaniambia nini 
Lokot walininyonga. Uhuru akantupa life. High court ikaniambia ati imenipunguzia kifungo kutoka condemn mpaka life. Mm-hmm. So it's the same same ni kikapu moja ilikuwa imeangalia hivi so ni kama tumefanya kuitilt. Iko pale pale kwa kichwa lakini tumeizungusha kidogo iko inaangalia hivi. Mm-hmm. So hakuna difference. So mimi ni adam ulikuwa kiniambia niandike court of appeal appeal yake hata sikuandika mimi. Hata ikaran kwanza out of time hata sikuiandika. So mimi nikakaa miso nikaanza kuongea na akaniambia wewe fanya hivi tuchore vile utarudi but nzuri hata kabla tuanze kuchora transfer ya kamiti mm-hmm. kutupwa kamiti the same same day hatukumaliza documentation hiyo siku kabla tuandikiwe kuliona transfer ya teremka manyani aya nikateremshwa manyani uh-huh. kufika manyani the worst thing ni kwamba sasa ukiingia manyani kutoka manyani wasipokutoa transfer ya yani wao kukupeleka jela nyingine yenye kutoka it's easy wow lakini we kurudishwa jela yako manyani ah hiyo ndugu yangu wewe sahau unaenda kwa documentation hivi labda ulikuja transfer last year naambia nimekuja naomba transfer nauliza eh shona manyani namba sasa namba yako ya jela manyani namba unasema siji fulani fulani ya 2022 nauliza ah hujamaliza hata miaka tano hujamaliza hata miaka tano na sasa hizo hujamaliza mwaka mm. ah unaambua kuna mawe tatu iko hapo documentation hapo ya manyani anaitwa langat ro mbaya sana ro mbaya mbaya sana mm-hmm. lakini sasa manyani before nitengeneze sasa kukaa kuna ofisa in charge anaitwa maswai maswai we can say anaitwa nicolas kipruto arap maswai he was the type of man jela chakula ikipungua kwa so it's between mombasa na nairobi highway what he would do alikuwa anatoka anaenda barabarani with security akona cheo ya SACP senior citizen commission of prisons rank kubwa sana kwa idara ya jela mm-hmm. atasimamisha trailer umebeba nini achukue zile karatasi zile umebeba nini labda serious maindi maharagu whatever by mistake ikiwa imebeba hizi ndengu pojo hizo mchele maindi maragwe mm. ingiza jela yote yeko chini serikali italipa hiyo ndio na you would tell him nothing yeah mm-hmm. hata mshtaki there's nothing you will do with maswai mm-hmm. maswai was the type of man if you can recall i think it was 2017 yeye ndiye alizuia joho wakati ambao walikuwa nakuja Nairobi kulikuwa na maandamano yeye ndiye alizuia hapo na joho was the governor by that time na yeye anakuambia kwa sababu so, naye maswai bibi yake ni women rep watajatafuta county by that time Hai. so ilikuwa ni mtu mkubwa sana mm. pesa ya yote yenye ilikuwa imekuwa donated ya kujenga ukuta wa jela na ni kwa sababu ya mboga ya wanyama maswai alikula yote <laughs> na alikula na nini anakuja na waambia yeye majamaa anaita kila mtu sawa ni ni prisoners eh prisoners na maaskari yeye alikuwa anapiga mpaka maaskari makofi oh, yeah. by kwanza u make mistake ya ku harass mfungo akiwa karibu We umeisha <laughs> eh umeisha wewe mm. askari umeisha kusimamishwa kazi mm. ama hata kutafutia kufutwa kabisa mm-hmm. kwa sababu yeye anajua mfungo ndio uchumi wake so chenye alifanya ni anawaita nyote anawaambia I think uh, tumekuwa tukikopa it for the last three months nataka niwapatie amnesty ya mwezi mzima pesa si marufuku mfungo akiambua pesa si marufuku so many people wako na 400,000 500,000 kwa malaini zao so mm-hmm. kazi zao ni watume maaskari waende walete cash waende walete cash uh-huh. and siku ya tero ikija unaona mfungo akona box yake ya maziwa akona more than 500,000 na comfortably amebeba hivi <laughs> Eh kwa sababu ya nini mtu alishikwa mm. at 20 years ameka 25 years so. Hii noti mpya ikibadilishwa i was in prison mtu hiyo noti hajui vile iko mm. yeye anafanya kusikia anatamani by the coin jela zote hazifanyi kazi labda right. jela ndogo lakini <laughs> jela kubwa maximum coin hainaga kazi hata ukue na coin za 500 hey. hazina kazi 
hazifichiki shida kwa ni hiyo oh. eh, lakini not inafichika mm. so akitupatia amnesty kama hivyo ah hapo sasa ni raha sasa mm. so na nyinyi mfanye bidii so askari mwenye yako na akili yake vizuri sasa ma constable corporals mwenye yako na akili yake mzuri akitumwa tero search ye hakuji kufanya search na ni kwa sababu ya nini this guy anajiuliza pesa si marufuku na ni kunyang'anya simu so natumana tu nyingine na hapo kwa waya mm. vo inaenda inaletwa so ndakuwa nimefanya kazi gani yeah, so inabidi anakuachia tu simu maswai alikuwa mzuri sana so wakati ambapo kulikuja kuharibika ni wakati ambapo maswai alitolewa kukaletwa visa njaji alitolewa nyeri kingongo alikuwa anaitwa mandegwa mm. mluya mmoja rombaya sana na si ati ni rombaya no sisi tulimwona ni rombaya kwa sababu i was an yake. addict yeah. by that time na chenye alikuwa ataki ni hiyo vitu marufuku aina yote alikuwa ataki mm. and siku yake ya kwanza ya pili ya tatu in prison alikuwa ina position ya kutoa 90 kg bags tano za simu <laughs> 90 kg 90 kg tano za simu manyani manyani ilikuwa imefika mahali wafungwa ni kama wako raia and it's because ya nini bro rajo 90 kg ni easy fit za ngunia za ile ndefu 90 kg wachana na hiyo 50 aleka leka mchele 90 kg ile kubwa ya simu yes ujue simu zilikuwa mengi kuliko wafungwa <laughs> and it's because of one thing mfungwa mmoja ako na simu ngapi <laughs> hapa ako na simu ya kutuma code mm. sawa <laughs> simu ni mingi kuliko mfungwa eh hapa ako na simu ya kutuma code simu ya kutuma code inakaaga kwa sababu mfungwa wote wako na ndo mm. ndo za kukalia okay. hii ndo yenye umekalia simu ya code unaekaga hapa ya kutuma code mm. hapa kwa ndo kuna simu mbili ama tatu ama hata tano za kutuma message sasa message zenye unapataga ni kama sana sana message kama zile unapataga kwa simu unaona umetumiwa tu na mtu mm-hmm. eh, dear customer KCB mpesa soft loan now na mm-hmm. available vitu kama hiyo ama you have uh, been awarded 100,000 from Kenya shillings from Boresha maisha na equity bro hizi message zenye tunapata za za tunaweza kopa loan ya 50,000 zinatuma kutoka jela eh yeah, yeah. Okay. na ni kwa sababu mm. I have paid 1500 nimetengenezwa line ya landline from mm. out here mm. landline nimetengenezwa 020 mm-hmm. then nimeregistwa choose my number ya safaricom na 1500 the same nimekatengenezwa choose my number ya safaricom na 4500 namba sana sana kama ya parastatal 0709 mm. jo parastatal hakuna namba yote ya 0709 ambayo ni ya mtu binafsi yeah. So using the numbers of the tengenezewa and actually those are the numbers ambazo zinakutumia text. Na zikikutumia text okay, obvious ukiangalia pale juu kivyo vyote. Lazima utafanya nini? Utaingiana. Mm. So una suppose hiyo message ukisoma vizuri inakwambia you can borrow from up to 10,000 to 50,000 Kenya shillings yeah. from uh, to 250,000 mm. now na suppose ukwe maybe na something like 20% deposit ndiweze kufanya nini kuaccess kuboro mm. so what they do ama what we had to do ni you have to open a KCB mobigro ama vuma KCB vuma those are the usually the easiest accounts mm. ambazo unaweza kufungua mm. ukiwa na simu just even it's not a master smartphone ndio ikupatia pay bill number. So yule mtu ile deposit yake 20% maybe anataka loan ya 250,000 yeah, na anahitajika kuwa na around 7,500. Mwenye na borrow 10,000 anahitajika kuwa na 1,750. So hiyo deposit ndio hiyo anaweka kwa pay bill. Anaweka kwa account ya KCB Vuma ama mm. KCB Mobigro and I just transfer it tunaanza safari kwa online hiyo ndio itolee cash ama tume kwa Airtel hiyo ndio tulikuwa tu, tu, tunafanya mm. so tukasonga huyu uh, jamaa sasa akatukalia sana and i was like eh hey, hapana eh hey, maisha sasa kabini nianze kuchora sasa vile nitatoka manyani mm. kwanza nilichora kutoroka the first thing mm-hmm. there was a guy called Christina 
Christina aitoroka manyani akiwa watu watatu. Mm. Actually by that time I wished tungekuwa na ye. Though alitoroka kabla hiyo mama yende yangu ikuje. Christina did this. Eh? Christina alienda kwa so alikuwa na hate na na mwili. Alikuwa ni mtaita. Mm. Manyani iko within Taita Taveta County. Mm. So mbuga wa nyama anajelewa vizuri ya tavo. Mm. So what he did on that day ni kwamba uja maa alikuwa na kipaji ya kuhubiri. <laughs> na alikuwa na vuta bangi sana. <laughs> so he was like atakuja. Akianza kupreach hapa, mm. hata maaskari watacha shughuli zao waje wa msikizi. Mm. Ata create attention kwa kila mtu. So akawa akapendwa mpaka akapewa trust. Mm-hmm. So ye na ile trust yake what he did alifanya nini? Alienda carpentry, akatengenezwa fimbo. Kuna ile fimbo za wakubwa zile za kwele, zile ka fimbo kale. Mm. Then akaenda tailoring material. Kwa so akiwa shimo ni jamaa amekaa jela, ashaibaiba material zikifichwa. Mm. So yeye ni kwenda na anashonewa faster jezi, shati ya askari, trouser ya askari kwa sababu so, singo za askari zote zinashonwa na wafungwa. Ndio. Yeah. Hivyo ndivyo alifanya. Kiatu akaenda kwa fundi wa viatu. Yule mwenye ameletwa na maaskari akanunua. Mm. Akakuwa kwa complete kofia. Wafungwa let me tell you one thing. Mfungwa jela yoyote. Hata saa hii. Uchukua wafungwa wote wafungia hapa na uambie helikopter iko hapo nje. Nataka watu wa ngurume waende nayo. Mm. They will go with it. Yeah. Wafungwa walichonga, unaona ile mluru ile sahani ile sufuria ile. Mm. Ilichongwa ile kiraoni. Yes, ile kiraoni ya karao. Eh, ikachongwa <laughs> na ikafit. What? Na kalipa. Kofia unanunua tu. Jamaa. Sasa akatengeneza kiraka ya meja zile vitatu. So on that day kulikuwa na kulikuwa na hizi ah, watu wa church wenye wanakuja kutembea jela. Mm. So attention ya maaskari wengi ikawa iko upande wao. Na ye alikuwa si wanatoroka wakiwa watatu, akachukua wafungwa wawili. Amefaa kofia vizuri. Na aka time that day kwamba askari koplo mwenye alikuwa kimya ni mgeni. So walipofika kimya ako serious na wafungwa wawili na amewaambia wabebe kadi zao kwa sababu huwezi mm. toka nje jela kwa kujiacha kadi. So walipofika kimya ah na apeleka wakati vifagio. Mm. Ah kadi ziko wapi? Akachukua kadi, kadi zikaekwa hapo. Akatoka na wao. Kimya manyani kabla utoke kwa main gate ni mbali kiasi. So kuna vile alikata ma shortcut. So hesabu ya saa tano sasa. Mm. Less ni watu watatu. Lakini wakienda kwa mbao ya out wale wenye wako nje ni wawili. Si walitoka na meja. They don't have the know how kwamba mwenye alikuwa meja pia ni mfungwa. <laughs> Understand? Uh-huh. Sasa ikawa ni ngumu sana wakajaribu kutafuta mpaka sasa ikabidi out wote gang zote zenye ziko nje zirudishwe jela. Ndewaweze kubaini ni nani aswa mwenye yuko nje na kurudishwa sasa wanarudishwa yule meja mwenye alitoka na wafungwa wawili ni yupi haijulikani mm. hasa the last thing yeye anafanyika jela ni kila mtu urudi mahali penye walilala so kila mtu tukarudi nini haya mlilala wangapi jana 28 mko wangapi 27 nani ayuko Christina haya wanaenda nyumba nyingine haya toeni warranty yake huyo Waranzi zikatoaewa akatafutwa wamekosekana. By the time KWS wa inue ndege juu, mm. wapigie polisi wa Voi, it was about five hours later. Jamaa shafu kama ka Tanzania. Jamaa alienda na wakaenda na wakaenda it's about more than six years now kutoka waende. Hajaipatikana. Hajaipatikana lakini Christina alikuja kushikwa alikuja kashikwa after around one year, one month kwa sababu yeye alienda tu akaanza kulewa 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 na akaona ah kumbe wale ni mwapoteza rada na mambo ya askari hata huko raia anaweza kujifanya askari mm. sasa kujifanya askari ndio ile shi alifanya mm. tamari eh. akarudi lakini alifanya nini alitoboa kifungo yake na akarudi raia <laughs> alikuwa amebakisha amekaa 16 years na 
alikuwa amebakisha around 3 years mm. ndio nafanya atoroke so wewe unapanga sasa kuhepa sasa nikawa mimi akili yangu sasa inaniambia eh kulingana vile maisha iko hapa jela ai mimi naona nikimuu vipi ah sio ni kiwa sawa lakini sasa kila mipango yangu ingejaribu kupanga hivi misoi akanambia nini we fanya hivi we rudi shimo na rudi shimo vipi na documentation na kuna ujanja ya kutoka shimanyani wende shimo so nikaanza kasa kupanga nikapata 1000 na mbili. hiyo siku niliiba na simu mm. nilikuwa nimepewa tu na jamii yangu aitwa roba maremu so akaniambia ah, we fanya mambo yako ongea na yule daktari sasa kulikuwa na daktari alikuwa anaitwa bengoa sasa nikaenda kamuelezea so najua na ile muelezea ugonjwa yenye najua haiwezi tibika hapo jela <laughs> Eh hey, what you do? Mm-hmm. Sasa nikamwelezea aka ugonjwa nikajaribu kumdanganya. Ah. Sasa unajua manyani it's not easy kama vile shimo la tewa tunaweza andikiwa tu ugonjwa ukapelekwa makadara cause general the next day. Mm. Ah, ah. Manyani it's not easy. Ulireport ugonjwa leo upewe dawa urudi tena kesho kesho kutu mpaka wakuchoke sasa ndio ufanye nini? Mm. Upelekwe yeah. voi sasa. Mm. So that's what I did. Najifanya mgonjwa naenda narudi naenda narudi nilienda actually more than a week okay. yeah mpaka ikabidi sasa ile daktari akaniambia eh hiyo gonjo yako wacha tu nikuandikie refer hapo nikamwambia sawa mm-hmm. nikajua the first step iko sawa mm-hmm. voi the next tuesday sasa mm-hmm. voi walikuwa wanapeleka tu tuesday peke yake nikapelekwa voi wapeleka voi sasa misoi kwa sababu so, unajua nikamtu kamesoma nikamuliza sasa ni ugonjwa gani sasa ambao nitasema akaniambia ngoja ngoja tutatafuta ugonjwa lakini nina imani ukifika huko uongee na daktari poa atakusikiza kaambia poa but nzuri nilipata daktari alikuwa anaitwa Saida Saida ya Senati kamswahili ka kutoka Lamu kadem lakini very listening daktari mzuri sana akaniambia unaumwa na wapi unasikia nini nikamwambia madam kusema kweli mimi si mgonjwa <laughs> lakini i have been to those prisons up there you can see my age atasijafikisha miaka i just want actually kurudisha malatewa nikafanye appeal so what do you want naomba tu niandikie ugonjwa yote na uniandikie rifa ya cost general kwa so eh, moi county referral hospital ni ya Taitataveta county mm. it's a just a county lakini cost general ina serve cost province. Yeah, yeah. Akanambia only that. Akanambia eh. Akawa nikamwambia sasa utakuwa unahitaji ngapi? Akanambia I don't need payment. Let me just do your favor. Ah, faster na muri pap. <laughs> na akaandika it's an emergency case ngumu mtu anafaa pelekwe saa hii. <laughs> ah, nikirudi manyani hivi. Mimi sasa inamwambia mimi naenda shimo. Akanambia <laughs> bro, fit. <laughs> mimi chwa nimefika shimo la tewa. Mm. Kasa ujue hawana uwezo wa kunirudisha transfer tena kwa sababu huyu mtu ameandikiwa kwanza ana suppose kuwa clinic every 14 days every 14 days. <laughs> so inabidi nikae. Hapo mm. sasa ndio bado unga sasa hizo imenikondesha. I'm weightless kabisa sina appetite. So so hii time yote bado hujafikiria maybe kuacha kama ile thing. Ah sijafikiria kuacha. Okay. First thing mm chenye ilikuja in mind there was a time ambayo ni lose weight to 42 kgs and i was like kwangu mimi nasema hii hey, kunyolewa yenye hey, nilinyolewa i guess i contracted hiv kunyolewa eh yeah. okay. unajua mimi sikuwa nataka mashine so i was mostly nanunua razor blade na nilipa mtu ananinyoa mm. lakini si kipara kuna vinyozi wanajua kunyona vichana mm so nikawa mimi nafikiria kwani alinikata bahati mbaya man nini so nikawa niko na hiyo suspense so nikasema one day wacha tu niende hosi kuna daktari kwa anaitwa Bwire niende tu ni muone anipime tu nijue mbivu na mbichi mape mapema kama ni dawa nianze kumeza mapema ha mimi nikaenda hosi nikazumbua Bwire sana kanambia hapana wewe subiri wiki ijayo friday tunakuja kupima kila mtu kiwanja tunapima TB na tunapima. Mm. Ah, nikamwambia sawa. 
Sasa that was actually 2019 sasa. Mm. Nikakaa. Niliporudi Maraga ndio akasoma ile judgment ile ya muru wa tetu kama unasikia ile ya muru wa tetu mm. na Francis the sentencing. Eh ile ya sentencing ndio akasema kwamba everyone mwenye eh mwenye ako na eh mwenye ako na hiyo nini mm. arudi retrial. Mm. So mimi nikawa hata hiyo mambo ya petition sina haja kuandika hata siko nafikiria ati kwa mtaandika mimi hata nikaachana tu nayo kwanza mm. bado nafuta dawa and I, i see i have no future sasa naandika naandika nini na hakuna mtu yote ambaye anaona imesaidia mm. ah. so nikasonga songa nikaanza kwenda hospitali hiyo friday ikaja ilipokuja sasa kina viki tukiwa nao kwa nyumba every day every day wako na ile eh hey, Derek na Newton si mwacha nani naunga jamaa remember how good you were wakati ambao ulikuwa mvutiunga mm. remember how trusted you were like sasa unga ni nini heroin it's the worst it's the worst thing it's better kama unataka kuua familia ya mtu it's better you kill everyone rather than uchukue mtoto mmoja umfunze unga it's a lifetime disease it's a continuous disease it's something about it will never end mm. So mimi kwa mindset yangu ni ile inaingilia hapa inatokea huko hata naona hakuna kitu unaniambia and it's everyone mteja yote under experience hata mashirika yoyote ambayo yana deal with mm. wagonjwa na addictions za heroin they know that So mimi kwangu mimi nikawa naona ah haina shida acha niachane tu nayo Haya sikuandika appeal. Huyu jamaa anaitwa Yusuf Shiunzi. Mwenye ni kwambia I think he's an head teacher in a certain school in Mikindani Mombasa. Yeah. Very educated. Hata kishikwa by that time alikuwa ameshikwa tu na kesi ya defilement ambayo alikuwa ameyekelewa. Hata alikuwa hajui. Mm. So he was like alikuwa na ile intention ya kunisaidia, kunisaidia. So I think it was 2018 December. 2018 ama 2019. 2018 December if I'm not wrong. Sasa kabla madaktari wakakuja mm. kiwanja and i was like sasa newton akanambia bro twende tukapime eh sasa hizo tukijiangalia unajua ni ile unaona uko na mawe yani uko na ile rank na si rank ya nini ni rank ile umekona <laughs> paka hizi hizi socket hizi zimetokea hivi atimae eh uko na madimanga kama hizo mamwera hizo eh uko na cheo uko na rank eh kwa sababu rank ya kukonda eh rank ya kukonda eh ukijiangalia hivi mpaka ukisimama hivi eh unaona alafu hizi hii unapata hiyo hii jo hii jo imetoka bro mpaka mtu akikuangalia hivi yani ni wewe hicho tu limetokea hivi sasa unajua ni nini Skill B whoever anaelewa uh, skill B ni nini skill B rais ya mchele skill B moja mm. ilikuwa ni kitu ambao naweza kula mchana ni kule jioni na ni kule kesho yake and it's something ambayo ulikuwa before nianze kuvuta dawa ulikula yote twins na eh, shibi hata uwezi shiba hata uwezi sikia kama ni kitu mm. so kwangu mimi sasa nikaona e eh, hii z itakuwaje wale madaktari wakaja nikaenda hapo inaitwa IMS sasa watu wako wengi wamekuja kupimwa wa US state zao uzuri the best thing in prison wako upande wa ugonjwa unatibiwa hata kama ni ugonjwa gani hata hmm. kama it's lifetime utatibiwa medical upande wa jela Kenya prison service na wapatia hongera sasa nikiwa hapo first time nikaenda hapo kwa daktari actually it was my first time in lifetime kwenda kujua my hiv status mm. kwa sababu ya nini jambo la kwanza in mind kutoka nini saliwe by that time i had never had sexual intercourse na ndeme yote second thing nilikuwa sina ile eh, akili ya kuniambia kwamba naweza kuwa nimezaliwa nayo mm. kwa sababu my mom contracted when she was at her old age la tatu i never had any sexual intercourse when i was in prison so nikawa najiambia ah, 
So nikaenda tu daktari akaniuliza eh ushai kupimwa tena akamwambia bado. Ni mara yako ya kwanza akamwambia eh akaniambia sasa hii ndio akaanza kuonyesha kale ka chart kale mm. hii ndio valid results hii ndio deposits hii ndio invalid akanionyesha onyesha lakini sasa hizo roho ni ile yani unasikia yani pa 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 <laughs> inapiga naogopa <laughs> eh hey. hata ni ile yani unajiambia kama ingekuwa nimesimama hapa hata singekuja ningeenda tu <laughs> hujui ah, akanidunga kaeka damu kaeka hapo kwa yako kanini akaniambia achukua kwa kitu nenda ukae kule angalia kuo peke yako kimaliza onletee majibu sasa kale ka kitu bro kale ka, te, ka test kit kale kwanza kanaweza kukuchora kwanza unaonaga mbili chwa <laughs> unashangaa rada unashangaa kwani ni vipi nikaanza kusikia na tetemeka hivi mara ikafade mpaka ikakuja moja sasa ni, hata sijikuwa sijaelewa mzuri vile ameniambia and i was like okay wacha nirudi daktari akaniambia Eh hey, thanks. Naona uko sawa? Nikamwambia eh daktari uko sure? Akaniambia eh hey. mm-hmm. na nikamuuliza mbona niko hivi? Kanaambia ulipi ma weight? Uko ngapi? Nikamwambia 42 kg. Akaniambia eh hey. Akula vizuri na ufanye mazoezi. Kuna kitu yote unatumia? Nikamwambia hapana. Mm-hmm. Akaniambia sawa. Sasa nikiwa ndio nataka kutoka akaniambia njia za kujizuia hiyo ugonjwa nini mm. so nikiwa nataka kwenda akaniambia ngoja 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 lakini hiyo ugonjwa inakuwa na ndugu yake Hebu nenda pale nenda upime TB So nikaenda pale sasa najua ah, TB sina siko hoizi hiyo niko na ile dhana siko hoi nikachukua kale kachupa kale kenye wanaeka ile nini mate mm. nikakoa nikatupa hapo nikafunika nikaacha hapo sasa niko na rara najua sina <laughs> e, ah, na mimi nikaenda Mm. Ni kama hivyo around 5 days. Nikiwa nimekaa na miso na Newton. Mm. Tumekaa hivi. Nikasikia. Derika hiyo kama huo cleaner hospital ndio ameniita. Nikasema kamuliza ni nini mbona hospital kwani majibu ile ndio kageuka huko. <laughs> Akaniambia hapana. Mm. Ulipimwa TB nikamwambia eh. Mm. Ukiona umeitwa jua uko nayo. <laughs> so nikaenda hosi hapo ni kwanza kupimwa weight upimwe tena HIV upimwe sukari magonjwa yote upimwe upya mm. na unaanzishwa dawa za TB nilianzishwa dawa za TB when I was 42 kg mm-hmm. dawa tatu daily e, zile tablet kubwa mm. so nikaona hii hapana lakini sina budi itabidi so unakunywa dawa bado uki kichoma ngani ni yako so, ngakwe hiyo 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 advice ya kwamba daktari amekuweka chini mm. amekwambia you have to quit smoking ndio hizi dawa zisikuwe but if you do the both lazima utakufa and it's actually true huwezi pona mm. and tuberculosis as you know ni ugonjwa ambao it's a very inaua haraka sana yeah so mimi nikaona okay fine itabidi tu mimi actually nilikuwa na dose almost ya kama gram 2 by that time ya heroin ya heroin mm-hmm. so nikaona kwangu mimi the best way ni kuacha na kuacha jambo la kwanza nikate marafiki nikate maeneo kukata marafiki ni i don't want any friend who is an addict yeah la pili kukata maeneo ni kuhama ile nyumba niliyokuwa nikapelekwa nyumba ya TB i7 i6 hmm. tulikuwa watu wanne watu watano chu tukaongezeka mpaka tukafika watu saba lakini sasa unajua ni nyumba kubwa na kila mtu ana suppose kuwa na space nzuri ni kama sick bed tuseme hmm. and you are suppose una suppose kumeza dawa for 168 days that is 6 months 5 months 12 days although mwezi wa tb huo naisha na 28 days lakini actually huo unahesabiwa kama miezi sita. mimi mm. nikaanza kumeza dawa with the drawl kutoka kwa heroin it was hard totally hard i never slept mimi nikiwa na hesabu hivi for 29 days sikuwahi kufunga macho not day not night pain 
kuharisha kutapika na bila kula uji ya wimbe tu ndio nilikuwa nakunywa na nikikunywa any minute natapika lakini i told my god just help me kwa so i have now realized kwa so by that time nilikuwa ndio na 18 i 18 and mm. sasa nikaona hiyo mm. akili sasa inanikujia sasa i'm someone and i have to change and i'm willing to change nika move by the time the second month kwa sababu unamali unabalishwa kwa dawa ya TB after two months lazima wakupime weight kama uko over 55 wanakuongezea tablet moja na wanakubalishia dawa unapewa tablet zingine ndogo ndogo yeah actually baada ya 29 days usingizi kaanza kuja nikaanza kula kama mchwa <laughs> nilikula sasa mulisha jidetox yeye eh nilikula sasa and by the time nafika the second month kubalishwa dawa i was 57 kg wow na nilipoenda i was the best kwa wale wenye walikuwa wana improve nikabalishwa dawa na nikaongezwa dawa moja kwa sababu kishapita hii tunaongezwa tembe moja so after then nikakaa nikiendelea kumeza dawa zangu most of the time I, I, I used my big time in prison baada ya kwamba nimeacha unga sasa mm-hmm. reading novels it's something ambayo nilipenda sana 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 even to date i have more than 10 novels mali penye niko oh. na ni, i read them day by day day by day and i put one thing in mind eh? failure it's usually the only opportunity to restart again well and more intelligently you can never start again intelligently if at all you have not failed you have to fail first hata mtoto shuleni akifail anajua eh next time nafaa ni suppose suppose kufanya bid so mimi nika move vizuri na dawa zangu nikaja nikamaliza na nilipomaliza sikutaka kurudi kwa ile nyumba wala marafiki nilihamia nyumba ya kanisa ilikuwa inaitwa D4 hakuna kuvuta sigara hakuna kuvuta unga hakuna kuvuta bangi hakuna kuuza biashara yoyote hakuna biashara ile inafanyika eh mkiingia ni muangalie news mkimaliza news maombi that's where i went so hiyo nitakuelezea hiyo hiyo ilikuwa ni part sasa ya wakati ambapo sasa tushaaitwa kotini mm-hmm. actually mimi si kuandika petition Yusuf aliona how I am my capability ule prince yule principal eh, mm-hmm. na akaja akachukua show namba yangu shimo namba sasa hiyo kitambulisho mm. akachukua criminal case namba yangu 25 26/2013 akaandika akachukua pili ya high court namba akaandika petition so it was like nilishangaa sana hiyo wakati wa covid 19 sasa hiyo nimeshangaa nimeitwa kotini na tena tumeitwa na kwa accused person that was like petition ukuo jaandika si kama apile yenye accused mmoja akitwa mnaitwa nyote hmm. petition na kitwa ni yeye peke yake and i was like ai kwani mimi nikaenda koti uzuri atu kwenda kotini tulikuwa tunafanya na skype yeah. so kwa sababu wakati wa corona so yusuf alikuja hapo kando kwa sababu alikuwa anafanya kazi paralegal huko akaniambia Derek so mimi naitwa koti eh nilikuandikia sawa akamwambia fit anikajua okay <laughs> actually huyo jaji akatushikanisha that was uh, 20 2021 mm. 2020 eh. 2020 december mm. akatushikanisha alipotushikanisha mm. nao mako- kwa sababu kila mtu alikuwa ametuma petition yake oh, okay so huyu mmoja huyu mmoja alikataa kuandika kwa sababu alisema yeye haezi andikiwa na makafiri kwa sababu so aliturn na akakuwa marafiki tu alshabab sana okay so ikafika tu point akaona sisi wa Kristo ni kama si watu akasema haezi andikiwa na makafiri mm. and that's why he is right now as we are speaking two years from the, wakati ambao mimi nimetoka jela huyo jamaa yuko ndani na still akona life tukaanza kufanya hearing sasa 
hii kesi ya resentencing ni kwamba lazima you have to accept kitendo chenye umeshtakiwa nacho mm -hmm. whether you like it or not mm -hmm. whether ulifanya ama hukufanya mm -hmm. lazima kwanza ukubali kwamba nini ulifanya ulifanya yeah. saa so, kama hukufanya rudi kwa statements na proceedings ile role yenye wewe ulipangiwa na complainant kubaliana na hiyo you play it yeah. you play it mm -hmm. and that's what i did so ikabidi na pati yenye mimi nicheza the best thing mimi hata kwa wizi wenye nilo waifanya siku waijeruhi mtu and it's something that i hated most huwa nachukia sana kuna damu and it's something that it usually hurt me sana mm -hmm. na up to date huwa najutia sana kwa nini nilifanya hivyo you regret a lot i regret a lot sana 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 lakini i never regret going to prison why because of one thing if i never went to prison i would not be speaking today ningelikuwa nilikufa kitambo mm -hmm. kwa so ile speed yenye nilikuwa niko nayo ilipunguzwa i had another speed ambayo ilikuwa si ya kawaida in search of money desperation mm -hmm. so I, i thank god nilienda jela i would either be killed or shot at that age so petition to kindly kusikiza until akatupatia judgment ilikuwa ni mwezi wa sita tarehe saba. Mm. you cannot somewhere petition number 110 ya 2019 yeah i'm going to look yeah. yeah. ndani somia yeah, yeah. ukisoma hapo petition mm. number 110 ya 2019 yeah. ukisoma hapo tulienda kusomoa judgment na judgment yetu haikuruka tulipofika tarehe saba mwezi wa sita. Mm. by that time ilikuwa madhako ya asha kwa in mm. lakini kuna petition ambayo sijui ni nani alikuwa amefile ambayo alikuwa hataki mambo ya resentencing iendelee iendelee mm. lakini sisi akawa yeye amepeana judgment kwamba ni tarehe saba mwezi wa saba. Mm. sisi nasi tumepewa judgment tarehe saba mwezi wa sita. okay tulipoenda mwezi wa sita, mwezi wa sita tarehe saba, kakuta jaja anaitwa Eric Ogola a very good gentleman listening anakupatia time akusikize first accused Vincent Okol alipo 16 years mm -hmm. second ndio huyo ako na life bado mm -hmm. third fourth na mimi fifth i was the last accused fifth accused mm -hmm. tukapoa 12 years concurrent ama from the day nimefungwa from the day of arrest okay na okay from the date of arrest mm. alafu akatwambia mm -mm. yeah from the date of arrest mm -hmm. you come from the date of arrest then uh, akamwambia huyu mwenye alikuwa na life sasa mwenye alikuwa na life mm -hmm. akamwambia siku nyote andika petition yako ukileta tuta tutaiangalia mm -hmm. sawa huwa 16 years akajua kuna 16 so yusuf ako hapo kando and he is busy akinipigia hesabu from 2013 to 2021 mm. mwezi wa saba ni muda gani nimebakisha and i was like nimebakisha miezi 4 na siku mbili <laughs> wow yes miezi 4 na siku mbili so i felt that freedom ya kwamba i have broken chains ulivyo luko free sasa yeah i have broken chains ebu ebu angalie that situation ya kwamba nimeacha madai ya kulevya through kujua kwamba niko na TB by the time mimi naenda kusomoa judgment nilikuwa nimebagisha mwezi mmoja nimaliza dawa za TB so namaliza dawa za TB at the same time na maliza addiction addiction inaisha mm. zile withdraw symptoms kwa mwili zinaenda zikisha that thing nimesomoa judgment it's now four months kwenda home mm -hmm. good luck nikaanza sasa i feel free na nikaona i think naenda hata kufanya mazoezi mm -hmm. i feel some of free yani hata na move freely yani nasikia yani niko na ile peace of mind though i have worries ya kwamba out there naenda wapi naenda wapi so mimi nika move to mm -hmm. nikaambia god mase actually 
uasiachi rosary yangu wherever i go i have it even now mm. so i was like nikashika to rosary by that time nikasema mungu tu whatever will happen when do najua and that's it mimi ka move vizuri paka ilipofika mwezi wa 10 ikiwa na 19 19th date ya October 2021 mm. kesho yake ilikuwa ni mashujaa ilikuwa inafanyika Mwea mm-hmm. Kirinyaga county hiyo ndio siku kwenye mimi natoka jela oh. and i was like kabla okay before i i i, I came out eh? Newton aliachishwa jela dawa unga heroin kupitia mm. methadone methadone si ndio tulianzisha methadone shemu latewa okay la methadone ni hiyo ya mate yeah. medical ya sister therapy si ndio tulipushe watu wa Richard Center Trust mimi misoi na Newton, Newton. si ndio tulipush watu wa mewa watu wa reach out na Hassan Joho by that time ndiye alikuwa governor we pushed him to a point ya kwamba aliconsider kwamba prisoners are people too jambo la kwanza mm. the second thing being an addict you're not supposed to be isolated in the society they're supposed to bring you at least hata kama you are an addict you can do something constructive and we can try to mold your mind in such a manner kwamba you can change yeah. so it's not something permanent you can change ni kitu ulijifunza and i believe this during, during my lessons za math medical exercise therapy addiction it's like the same same way na kupanda stairs mm. the moment when you lianza ilikuwa ni step ya kupanda stairs ya kwanza till ukafika the last one juu sasa hii uko hapo juu addiction ufai kuchukua any addict na umwachisha unga hivi you are going to kill him you have only one option we are panda stairs umtumie hiyo njia kushuka mrudishe dose chini advice mentorship 100% sure atafika stairs ya chini and he'll quit so tulipo Newton actually akaja kaacha but uh, Newton alikuja akakuwa the best zaidi hata yangu role mm-hmm. model kwa watu though Newton alikuwa he was one of my best friends kwao alikuwa rich sana mama yake akona makote nyingi sana diani na Newton alikufa kifo tatanishi akiwa jela akiwa jela Newton no one expected Newton kwamba anaweza kufa Newton alikuja akapewa trust na ofisa in charge mwenye alikuwa sikumbuki mm. jina yake vizuri lakini alifariki ofisa in charge mkamba so nito nakawa wale ma trusty hawampendi kwa sababu ako na favors mingi zenye anapewa na ofisa in charge mpaka ikafikia mahali ni kama yeye ndiye anasimamia ma trusty wengine mm. yeye bado ndiye anasimamia wafungwa upande wa mat methadone nini nini mm-hmm. so ako na hizo privileges mingi So huwa tuna suspect Newton alisagiwa chupa ama bulb hizo vitu mbili kwa so they are, they are usually the easiest way za kuua mfungwa wa ufungwa huwa wanauana mm-hmm. nayo sana mm-hmm. so so like kusiaga bulb inakuwa like inakuwa, inakuwa dust inakuwa dust mm-hmm. then inaikiwa kwa uji okay so hiyo kikunywa actually huwezi maisha vena na week mm-hmm. na kufa So Newton we were very close actually on that day they are coming the next day alikuja mimi kwa na card tu baada ya kumaliza sasa hiyo baada tu nishatoka E4 baada ya nishaona sasa nime gain vizuri it's almost two months sasa niende nyumbani mm-hmm. nilihama nikaja D2 ilikuwa ni nyumba inakaa in charge wa block mm-hmm. ilikuwa naitwa Hamisi mm-hmm. so Newton mm-hmm. yes ni trustee anaka D8. Mm. D8 ni nyumba ama trustee. So una huwa zinaanza hivi. D1, D8. D2, D7. Mm-hmm. Zimeenda hivi. Mm. So nilisikia around saa jioni Newton alikuja kwangu kwanza. Eh hey, Junior ni aje poa kwa mlango. Ni aje si ukamu hivi? Ah, nikamwambia fit akaja akanesi yako ni trust akakuchukua fungua akaja akanifungulia saa 11 mimi actually hata nilikuwa by that time naingia kwa nyumba 
ikiwa saa moja imefika lock up ya sababu ya lock up ya saa moja ndio imefika mm-hmm. so mimi nika nikaingia nikaenda hapo nje tukaenda mahali kunaitwa D5 huko pale mwisho kwa kona mahali kama hapo mm-hmm. tukakaa hapo tukapiga piga story sasa hizo the best thing ni kwamba i, I change wizi wa simu ni kwa staki mm-hmm. kutoka wakati ambapo niliacha unga hivi nikaachana na uhalifu aina yoyote either it's direct or indirect mm-hmm. ni kwa sababu kujihusisha na anything kwa sababu niliona life yangu mahali penye nilikuwa inaelekea so newton hiyo john tukaachana vizuri vizuri sana haumwi hasiki chochote and the next morning around saa 10 nisikia tu mlango umegongwa kuko kuko eh kwa matrasti so kuna trasti moja inaitwa salem yanga nikasikia anakuwa na sauti nzini akasema huyu mtu atakufa bwana so ni mtu wanaita serikali ndio ambulance iletwe mtu apele kwa hosi hmm. makadara so by that time nito nakapele kwa hosi na hesabu ilipoisha ya, ya unlock ya asubuhi hmm. ya 6:30 watu wakisema mkufunguliwa kunywa uji saa moja kwa sababu si kulikuwa on a weekend mm-hmm. ilikuwa kuna tero mm-hmm. watu wakisema na kufunguliwa kuna trustee wa hospitali sasa anaitwa Alex Akoraia aliachiliwa mm-hmm. actually ndiye alinipigia okay. ah alikuja tu mm-hmm. kwa nyumba yangu kaniza junior ni aje poa uko na ripoti yote nikamwambia gani umeona na Liban Liban ni askari wa welfare lakini ana deal na mambo ya hosi sana mm-hmm nikamwambia bado akaniambia bwana eh nilitoa na ametuacha and i was like ati nilitoa na ametuacha how nilitu tulikuwa naye jana jioni mm. so hata familia yake actually mama yake ali demand sana kufanya post mortem yake mm. tofauti kwa so she is rich mtu anakaa dubai mara ya kenya whatever yeye yeah, alikuwa ameshikiwa kesi ya mada na kesi ya newton ya mada it's because brother yake alienda kawawa kwa club. Okay. Newton akajua. Newton by the Newton anaitwa Newton njo, eh, Newton Beck Njoroge. Mama babake Newton ni wale wa mama alipata mimba mm-hmm. na mwanaume tu hivi. Then akaolewa na mzungu. Okay. So Beck ni jina la mzungu na Newton alikuwa ametanishwa na huyo mzungu so yeye ndiye amemlea. Okay. So Newton ali, alipojua kwamba ndugu yake ameuawa na watu fulani 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 club fulani What he did Newton alichukua gari ya babake. Akaenda akatafuta akachukua gari ya babake, akachukua bunduki ya babake, akaenda akachukua nini ile club. Akachukua ile jamaa mwenye alimuua, akamweka kwa gari, akampeleka shimba hizi akamua. So alishikwa kitoka shimba hizi. Mm. Kesi yake ya mada ilikuwa hivyo. Mama yake alijaribu kuhangana, haikufaulu, ilihamisha mpaka jaji anaitwa Mauri Nodero high court kwa sababu kesi ya mada zinafanywa high court mm. ilihamisha ambako ni judge wa high court yeah. so mi baada ya hapo and i was like sasa niko na baridi naona hata mimi naweza uwawa na sijui ni nini so jambo la kwanza ni nichunge chenye nakula nakula na nani kimetoka wapi hivyo so nikaanza kujichunga sana kwa sababu ukiona uko karibu kutoboa kifungo actually mm. sasa wengine wanaweza pata vimikosi tu hapa kule unaweza umia ukavunjika vitu kama hizo so nikaanza tu kuchunga line yangu although ajali haina kinga yeah true yeah so mimi till that day by the hiyo siku nikitoka mimi nitoka nikiwa na vest na kinyasa bila viatu kone i wanted that freedom nipumue tu hewa ya nje and i be like nilitemka tu hapo bridge kwanza nikaingia baharini hivyo tu nilikauka maji yangu nikiwa niko almost shanzu nishapita shanzu hivyo vest kinyasa na open slippers tu and i was like sasa naenda wapi sasa nikitoka jela nimetoka jela nikiwa na 64 kg mm. and actually 2021 it was 2021 october lakini nikifika February 2022 wakati ambao sasa nakuja kupoa waiting ya ID yangu hmm. nilikuwa nimeloose almost niko around 55 kg because of life ushaifika mahali ukatamani it's better urudi jela i have ever reached to that point and i was like 
mom, she never accepted me till to date. Despite of all, she is still my mom. Hiyo ndio kitu yenye naikaa fact. Hata anifanyie nini? Mlienda home kukaendaje? Mimi I never went home. Mm. I never went home kwa sababu ya nini? Sijazaliwa na kukuambia kwamba naweza kuambia Kirinyaga. I know it's Kirinyaga. Na I know very well kwamba my mom is not in good terms na people from Kirinyaga kwa sababu there is something she did there. Mm. Alienda akachukua title deed ya shamba huko. Mm. Najua ki Kirinyaga wanawake pia wanagawanywa shamba kwao. Okay. So alienda akachukua, akachukua na death certificate I think sababu na aka epa nazo. Okay. So ikawapatia hard time wale kurudi kwa lanzo wakalipa pesa mingi sana. So your hatred ikaekwa. Na the moment yenye nilitoka nijaribu kutafuta cousins. Actually there are some even wanafanya kwa county government. Kirinyaga around one or two. Mm. And it was like kwangu mimi naona nilipowapigia once you go to prison 80% of Kenyans they believe kwamba ulifanya and they believe that you cannot change mm. and from my mindset yes i did but i'm changed but who is going to believe that you have changed no one no one mimi nilipata a very hard time kupata kitambulisho hivi mm-hmm. kwa sababu first thing Misi nimeweka Mombasa I think kutoka udogo wangu wote. Mm. First thing lazima ukue na kitambulisho wa mzazi. Kitambulisho wa mzazi unatoa wapi? Kwanza. So I had to kutafuta wale watu ambao walikuwa marafiki za mama. Na nikapata mama mmoja. Kunaitwa mama Calvin. Mm. Nikamwelezea na anajua story yangu. She was not willing to help me on the, the issues lakini akaniambia nini? Kuna chama tuliwacheza na mamako photocopy ID yake sinaweza pata. Mm. She gave it to me. Sina bath. I went back to the school yenye nilikuwa nasomea. Primary. Nikamwambia nimekuja nataka living certificate yangu. Huyo madam akaanza kunizungusha kinaambia my mama alikuwa na area za shule sijui nini nini nikamwambia that is not the case. What I need is a living certificate. I need an ID akakataa kunipatia. Nikaenda kwa chief nikamweleza story zangu. Chief wa Mombasa Mm. Kaniandikia barua nikarudisha kwa shule. Huo madam akanipatia living certificate handwritten lakini. Mm. Aliponiandikia mimi sasa ikabidi sasa nianze sasa process ya kuanza kwa mama mta. Mm. Alikuwa anaitwa Esther Mbeyo. Jomf maliko anaitwa Aldina. Kaenda kwa mama mta. Akaniandikia. Nikaenda kwa chief. Kaenda kanipatia hizo barua nikapigiwa muhuri. Sasa nikatumwa mahali kunaitwa mikindani mm. kwa national registry. Sasa nilipoenda huko nikaanza kuzungushwa tu pole pole ah wabara wana suppose kwenda kurudi kwao waende wakasajiliwe huko mm. mambo ya kitambulisho. But go, mimi the best thing ni kwamba si kuchoka. I never tired. I was never tired kwa sababu ya nini? I'm a grown up by that time. Nishikwe tu nikitembea kitambulisho kwa wapi kuna kitambulisho urudi ndani tena. It's something that I hate most. So kwangu mimi ikabidi kivyo vyote nijaribu kwa uwezo wangu na nikasumbua sana mpaka nikaandikiwa living nikaandikiwa waiting sorry mm. that was on 2nd February 2022 around five months after baada ya kuandikiwa living bro i got students and pupils I'm about to resume now some are pilots some are engineers some are just they have a good life good life and they in a position to assist me mm. but the worst thing or the most painful thing is that they believe you are a criminal mm. and no one is willing to help a criminal very few have that heart ya kusaidia so it became so painful to me painful sana mm to a point ya kwamba i became desperate in life it reached to a point ambapo i tried to commit suicide that was on uh, 17th april id yangu ishatoka nimejaribu kwenda kazi hata za mjengo lakini ubaguzi 
toka hapa wewe mwili wako hata unaweza beba mawe so it became so painful sana sana aya kwa wale wenye wanakujua haiwezi kupata kibarua anasema wewe ni mwalifu so kongo mimi it was like kila siku nikienda kikaa hivi machozi tu yananitoka i so i don't i don't see the reason ya kwa nini i'm supposed to live on this world mm-hmm. and uh, nikaona there is no need actually i can say kutoka hiyo 17th march to october last year last year mm. sijawahi lala kwa mtu na sijawahi lala kwa nyumba ya mtu uko na place ya kuishi i never had a place to stay kabisa i never na actually it was so painful kula kwangu actually nime lose weight sana hata saini kapima nime lose weight sana kwanza na it's because kula kwangu ni shida kubwa sana kwanza sasa chenye mimi usema hata kama niko na nguo mbili ama tatu I'll ever stay clean to hide my aibu zangu utaniona tu nikitembea ninajaribu nitafute vibarua wapi hakuna because there is one person ambaye aliniambia off late in our current world it does not matter what you know it matters who you know for you to prosper mm. it does not matter what you know but it matters who you know but there is one thing one eka in mind eh? there is a quote who inasema success is a matter of luck ask in failure any failure will tell you ukimuuliza atakwambia eh na jamaa fulani Derek naona aliangukia Derek unaona eh saa hii anaendesha gari kubwa kuna business fulani ameajiriwa kazi kubwa unasikia failure atakwambia nini ah wewe ni mwizi wewe aliangukia huyo <laughs> the next the same thing is success is not permanent same applies to failure mm. it's not also permanent so Mungu aliyekupatia wewe pia ndiye alinijima mimi na aliyenijima mimi ndiye akakupatia wewe So if at all you have share it if possible. It's not a must. No. But share it if possible. Kwa sababu you can give a helping hand to someone. Mm. So mimi ilipofika last year sasa mwezi wa kumi, ni ile nimejaribu ku hustle ile best sai Mombasa I think of Yazikara it's very famous mm. sika mauku. Na kulia Yazikara za 20. Hata mtoto by the way hata mtoto kimuliza za 20 ni kama umemdharau lakini amekunulia za 20 eh by that time amesimamisha gari kubwa sana hapo i don't say kwa sababu you have it or give me a big amount no hmm. but at least i usually believe one thing it's better you teach me how to fish rather than giving me the fish itself kwa sababu yani you'll give me today what about tomorrow lakini ukiniambia uki hata uniambie ndio uoshe hapa kila siku unaosha hapa you'll get 100 shillings i'll appreciate kwa sababu yani i never had that opportunity I had never had that 100 shillings. I appreciate. True. So mimi kafika to a point sasa nikaona Mombasa so many people know I was in prison. The iyo ku reintegrate back it's very hard. And nikaona no I don't see the reason ya kwa nini nikae hapa. I try to commit suicide. It's the same place ni melelewa. It's the same place ni shikiwa. No. Let me just move out. Niliomba lift kwa dereva wa trailer. Wa gari moja yeye kwaitwa Roy Transporters. Mm. Akaisikiza and he drop me. Mali kuna ito Capsaret. Capsaret ni hiyo junction. Yeah, LD. Hiyo junction ya kwenda Malaba kurudi Kisumu mm. kuingia LD hapo. Hapo ndipo alinibawa akaniambia kitaka kwenda LD town panda hivi. LD I met a guy. Tulijuana tu ile ah ni aje poa eh uh, mbona unakaa mgeni hivyo kuongea tu he told me he has been 
alikuwa anafanya sijui kari sijui ni Kenya agricultural sa, kitu kama hiyo mm. though alikuwa ako na alinelezea life yake he is not good at in terms of finance lakini ako na loans mingi ako na kazi kweli lakini ako na loan mingi zimempeleka mbio i told him can you teach me something maybe yenye naweza fanya anambia actually wewe utakuwa unafanya hivi wewe nikipata chance na kuita nitakuja nkufundishe kitu concerning grafting grafting avocados vitu kama hizo mm-hmm. and that's what he taught me hiyo ndio kitu yenye naweza sema nimejivunia and uh, from that time mpaka nikitoka huko i was given a sample of 700 seeds mm-hmm. nikazipanda after four months nikazifanya grafting baada ya kufanya grafting uh, zikamaliza two months sasa after the two months ni wana make sure tu kwamba unazimwagia maji unazipiga easy grow ama folia mm. after the two months they are on sale so out of the 700 It's not usually at the best person you will never be accurate ya ku graft zote na zikue sawa mm-hmm. lazima kuna zile zenye zita fail lakini watu wote walishangaa kwa sababu mimi zangu they fail 19 only wow. 681 zilienda through lakini sasa kwa sababu si zangu it was just the sample and mtu amenifundisha nika appreciate akaniambia ni ujuzi ambao nimekupatia rather than singe kusaidia mm-hmm. nikamwambia okay so one day nikiwa 2LD I tried to call someone alikuwa best alikuwa anaitwa Ferdinand at least if I can kwa sababu nilikuwa nimekanja almost the whole day even it was the second day kwanza but mzuri ama mbaya ikaingia to wrong number ile pingia to wrong number ni madam anaitwa Alice Adongo huyu Alice tukaanza tu nikamwambia oh i'm sorry nilikuwa natafuta Ferdinand akaniambia no it's a wrong number anaitwa Alice ami Nairobi akaniambia okay nikamwambia okay sawa fine na nikakata simu so the next day nilipojaribu kupiga namba tena ikaingia tu kwake and she was like i'm sorry but i guess there's something that we need to talk kwa sababu hmm. i see twice twice ah uh-uh. ah akaniambia do you have any problem kwanza akanielezea life history yake actually anakao hizo side za hiyo korogocho huko ndani kabisa mm-hmm. she is not even ni mtu daily basis anapigwa na bibi yake vibaya sana she is a graduate by the way mm-hmm. anapigwa na bwana eh anapigwa na bwana mm-hmm. ali dhulumiwa kingono when she was 14 years she got her first born na saa hii first born wake kona 11 years akapata mtoto wa pili akapata mtoto wa tatu ito king david kuna jacob moses na king david hapo kadogo mm-hmm. lakini huo madam i appreciate her so much mm-hmm. huo madam akaniambia so 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 nikajaribu kumaelezea story yangu and she was like akakuwa sema na sympathy sana mm-hmm. sana sana na akafeel hiyo pain yenye mimi nimepitia and she was like akaniambia just imagine watoto ni watatu na mzee yuko lakini in a week time ananiachia 100 shillings ya kulisha watoto na yeye mwenyewe ana suppose kula mm-hmm. and there is no shopping kwa nyumba what should i do so akaniambia njoo Nairobi at least nijaribu nikutafutie mahali penye wanaweza ishi mm-hmm. in the meantime tujaribu kutafuta kibarua so actually nikawa mimi napigia tu viki tunaongea tu na viki mm-hmm fikina mwambia eh hey bro nitafutie mahali popote any job mimi nitafanya at least nipate where i can stay peke yake na niweze kujilisha kwa sababu ku depend on someone who has pending kwa sababu ya nini huwa kuna ingiza dharau katikati mm-hmm. so it's better nijitafutie hata kama ni kidogo napata lakini at least so mimi hu madam walienda kukopa kwa duka na wakasema watarudisha pesa kesho yake ule mwenye alinileta hu mwenye alimuona mmm ndio nimepata na asubuhi huyo ndiye aliambiwa nilale kwake lakini hata actually even now today i don't know where i sleep kwa sababu bwanake hataki 
kwa sababu they have a single room bed ni moja mattress ni moja ako na wasichana wawili na wasichana ni wakubwa sio wasichana wadogo wasichana wako form 2 mm. wote wawili mm. mzee sasa for the few days ambao nimelala three days tulikuwa tunala mzee hiyo mattress inatoloi inaekwa chini tunalala mimi na mzee wasichana wawili na mama yao wanalala kwa kitanda wanafanya tu kutandika manguo so you see you are unafanya mtu mwingine a face life kwa sababu yako lakini eldori mali penye nimetoka it was my worst place nili face vitu mingi sana before i decided kuondoka huyu madam naye alienileta nairobi thanks to her sana ako na moyo wa kusaidia jana actually nilimpeleka mahali nairobi is my first time mahali kunaitwa raonda na alienda kutafuta kazi ya nyumba na mahali penye alipata alipata kazi ya nyumba jana ameacha familia ameacha ndoa kwa sababu she is mistreated daily basis anapigwa anafanywa vitu mbaya mpaka anashindwa kulisha watoto every day unampata kwamba analia and that huyo madam vile unamuona bado ako na roho ya kukusaidia though she doesn't have the finance yeah. actually she inspired me i'm writing a book by now niko chapter 3 book yako yeah wow congratulations yeah my life history hiyo ndio nimeandika tu my life history huyo madam ameandika kitabu actually it's her second book sai i think a third book though bado hasijakuwa published kwa sababu ya finance lakini ameandika hata kitabu so as i'm speaking right now i can say mimi nilipompigia viki jana actually kutoka nitoke Nairobi ama kutoka nitoke nitoke prison jana ndio nimeonana na viki for for almost one year two years mimi niliacha viki ndani yeah yeah juu viki ametoka juzi juzi last year juzi ya pivo last year november eh mimi nilimwacha ndani wow na hata tulikuwa tu tunaongea tu juu juu hivyo tu so nikiwa LD nikamwambia eh viki eh na kama Nairobi akanambia ina noma bro isipokuwa siko poa lakini sijui tutafanyaje kaambia tuacha mimi nikuje afadhali nilale nje lakini nikuwe tuna peace of mind hivyo akanambia sawa sasa ndio nilipokuja ndio akaeleza story yenu hmm. actually nikamwambia okay there's no problem wewe peana namba yangu i'm available kwa sababu i have nothing to hide from noya from uh, from someone hmm. sina ile aibu ya kwamba at because i'm giving my life story because i was in prison or something else this is my life and i'm trying to see the best way i can change it kwa sababu i changed anything to do with crime maze kama unajihusisha na crime na nikujue tu kwangu mimi see i'll not, I'll not go report you but look at your ties your ties never kwa sababu ya nini hmm. I was in prison for 8 good years and maybe ningeka even 25 years. True. Sasa hii uniambie nirudi tena prison another 15 years. Then home my my mom despite ya kwamba ananichukia I don't know where she is I don't even have a number despite ya kwamba ananichukia she is still my mom. Yeah. Alinizami peke yangu hana mtoto mwingine. Nikikufa leo kizazi yake imeisha. Lakini thanks to god ya kwamba niko hai na naamini kwamba one day i'll prosper in life na siku yenye nitapata mjukuu majali wa Mwenyezi Mungu nitamtafuta na mwambie mjukuu wako huyo and i'm 100% sure mm. tutakuja kuelewana i believe in god everything is possible yeah. so mimi when i got your call nikamka tu asubuhi Actually thanks for the breakfast. Hata <laughs> nikwaje I, I was no <laughs> so, bro. I know God. Right now what I'm facing ni mahali kwa kuishi. Kwa sababu right now kama saa hii I know it's almost 2:15. I'm wondering okay I'm going back. Huyu madam I can't sleep there for today. Yeah there's today there's tomorrow. Unajua kama ningelikuwa niko kazi mahali popote hata hiyo si shida 
naweza hang huko kazini na nikalala huko at least mwezi mmoja utimie i have even a, even a small amount ya ku even to rent at least hata nikilala chini nimefungua nimeingia mahali penye najua hmm. it's my place ivo it will also give me ample time ya kwamba i'll take my book kwa sababu i'm still smartphone yenye nilikuwa niko nayo i'll show you ili haribika the screen hmm. na i don't have even a single cent ya kutengeneza it was easier kwa sababu ilikuwa naweza kufanya nini type ku type na ikiwa soft copy lakini hard copy hata publisher mmoja nishaongea naye ikiwa Mombasa akaniambia it's hard actually ikiwa hard copy try writing on a phone ama kwa lapi so najua hajui life yangu so najua inapata sasa ni ngumu hmm. so that is actually my life so If, if, if someone is watching us na naweza penda kukofa an opportunity maybe job ivo do you have a choice of any kind of job what i believe eh, hmm. is one thing hata chenye sijui nitajifunza nikifanya yeah. the other thing is mimi naamini kazi ni kazi Yeah. Ili mradi you get an earning. In life we have only three things. Mm. You have to learn, earn and earn. Those are learn. the three ingredients of life. Learn and earn. Learn, earn and earn. Mm-hmm. Those are the three ingredients in life. Good life that is. Yeah. So I can't choose any type of job mimi nitafanya mm-hmm. na nitafanya to a point ya kwamba itakupendeza wewe ulieniajiri I love to give you this opportunity to pay you on a watch because I know it's a big number of people who are watching us and I know one or two people na mseta kokolea with a word of encouragement I'm set feel to go out of his way kutumia ka kitu. Kuna mse maybe alikuwa tu anatafuta tu mse ampe job opportunity. So take this opportunity up here in Bayako. Never know who is listening to us because I've never met the people who maybe moja moja after a while because pia mimi sasa zingine siko ngi mso kushinda nje sana. I don't know even 1% of the people who are watching us but i know there are good people there are good people who are doing good things to the people that you have been bringing here so chukua hii namba chukua hii fursa uwape namba yako actually namba yangu ni 0792476670 and a safaricom yeah it's a safaricom line okay derek kariuki wangoi mm mm-hmm. Na what I can say for all the viewers I have some two or three things ambazo maybe na is address kama we ni mzazi jambo la kwanza don't be so hard to your kids one thing let them have time to express their selves to you kuwa free kwa sababu the moment yenye utakuwa mkali zaidi kwa mtoto una instill fear ndani yake hana uwezo wa kukwambia what is in his mind ama kwa roho yake try to be free i guess there is an advertisement kwa, kwa tv ya cadbury ambayo mm. inasema two or three ah uh, okay kwa five parents two or three wanasema kwamba they don't have time with their kids mm-hmm. so it's the same have time with your children either ni mmoja ni wawili ni watatu give them time waskize don't be so hard on them secondly kwa watoto maze kwa lugha ya mtaa mbogi mabeshte majamaa wacha neni nayo wacha marafiki zako ikuwe ni vitabu zako 
wacha ikuwe marafiki zako na wazazi wako kwa sababu mzee mbogi mimi ndio nilinipeleka jela na if you can't change you'll be forced to change kama uko na kitu cha nyenye unajua unafanyanga bro uko na uraibu unatumia anga jaribu tu sikwambie uache but i'll tell you punguza hadi uache the other thing is that to all kenyans either ngos the government start programs in institutions that will nurture children pupils students imam by drugs and substance abuse is something ambayo imekuwa common sana inakuwa used as if it's just a norm mm. to na i don't think arresting those people ni solution kwa sababu what i can say saa hii there are those parents wenye wanasema mtoto wangu ameharibika and the solution ni kumpeleka jela arekebike my dear mom my dear father kupeleka mtoto wako jela siku haribiki siku siku, 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 siku mfanya reform yeah. iwe umefanya ende haribike kabisa 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 so take time at our programs by the way whoever is willing to support i was thinking of starting an organization ambayo it's an organization of ex life prisoners the reason ya kwanini i wanted to start such an organization mm -hmm. is one thing the life prisoners uwezi niambia mtu amehukumiwa condemn amehukumiwa life he, he is in prison out of a hundred prisoners wawili ndio wanaendaka kufanya kazi ama watatu na ni kwa sababu ya nini kuna wale wenye kama sisi maybe hatuko tumekubali kwamba ishafanyika na wewe kwenda kazi you are not even having that concentration ya prison industries mm. And the moment yenye unakuja kuwa released ama kupewa miaka sasa ndio uone kwamba uko na hope you see the light at the end of the tunnel umebakisha miezi true huwezi pata even a grade yenye unaweza kuja kusimamisha huku nje ukasema kwamba nimefanya carpentry ama tailoring so i think uh, this organization inafaa sana after these prisoners are out the reason ya kwa nini me na, 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 na taka sana we merge up with anyone with any support ni kwa sababu i have more than 15 people i guess i told you the story yeah. 15 people from 2021 sai had it today they are dead life prisoners what wenye waliachiliwa wakakuja kukufia huko eh wenye aliachiliwa walikuja kukufia na they were healthy people with their own looks lakini they died na they, they died kwa nini life after there so we are supposed to get on something ambao kwa sababu so, kama sai mm -hmm. it's been around two years kutoka mimi nitoke jela na sijawahi sema nimemiliki ati naweza sema niko na kanyumba kangu ama kuna mahali penye naweza sema I'm earning no i don't have anywhere sina mahali popote nimeajiriwa na whoever is going to offer me an job opportunity whichever mimi nitafanya kwa moyo moja at least i just make my own life awesome for me i believe i can give you just an one advice <clears throat> this someone who told me you can you can never give what you don't have and before anza kufikiria your fair of friends it's a, it's a good motive but it could drain sana first get track get your life on track at least uh, just at our kid join them say forces it to go poor but right now just first focus on like putting your life back on track because it's better off when you have some something that you can offer tangible to someone because as in gine, we think about helping other people to na jifsa how yeah. it's a good thing but say first uza jifikiria you put your life together at least to kwe na place where you work ni place stable 
we mwenyewe uko fit mentally uh, pia urudi form physically na itakuwa iko fresh and uh, for each and everyone pia ni wana to watch i believe what wako poa and uh, tumesikiza story ya Derek my biggest request my heartfelt request ni if you support him in one way or another itakuwa iko poa and uh, he has given us his number itakuwa iko fresh um ki reach out maybe you give him a word of encouragement and i believe that i appreciate sana and uh, i don't know if bro kuna kitu umebakisha kwa heart okay mimi kwa ngo mimi ni shukran tu mm-hmm. sina la zaidi mm-hmm. mimi kukushukuru tu for the job you are doing thank you actually it's going maybe to mentor so many people na mtu afuatilie yetu mtu afuatilie yetu i have nothing else to add on i love you all thank you awesome so guys when you're not watch i don't know from wherever you watching us from just want to take this opportunity to tell you thank you for watching us for almost over two hours and uh, really appreciate it pia wasi wenye tumekuwa tuki bring on board wamekuanga always reaching out kuni ambia that you're calling them and also supporting them and uh, you've changed so many lives because as ingine we can't afford to cater for them for a long time but us playing our part you playing your part we transform their lives so indio namba ya Derek kindly do whatever god and aku fanya you feel uh na itakuwa iko fresh so if you haven't subscribed to this far kindly subscribe na kama uja like hii video sasa zingine tunapata ng video iko over over 1000 views na unapata iko na 20 likes kindly like this video inasaidia anga sana eh ndio pia e video ifikie watu wengi so many lives will be transformed and uh, yeah itakuwa iko poa On our next video pia ni mtabambika eh, because uh, it's an inspiring story from a police officer itakuwa iko poa sana so kindly follow us subscribe turn on that notifications bell and also do not forget to follow the guy ever behind the scenes and itango deki derek and uh, you can also follow me on each and social media platform na itango mtutasonko and also you can follow it to on each and social media platform and if you have a story that you love to share with us indio namba yetu Yeah, to begin. Now it's going to be fresh. So until our next video. <laughs>